Hello guys and welcome to the Azus uh, Play It Cool Legacy House Stream event. You can see on this overlay, my name is Chris Papa Smithy Smith. I'm joined by Jordan Elfish Guy Mays for what should be a day of celebration for the OPL, but of course, in particular, for Legacy fans. We are coming to you live from the new Legacy Gaming House. Yeah, and I've got to say, it's a, a very nice place. I'd certainly like to live here myself, very modern and all that sort of thing. So uh, they found themselves a nice place, and uh, now we started to see sort of the fans rolling in and that sort of thing. So very good to see uh, everyone getting involved today. It's already been a big day here. Of course, we were here very early. There's been media coming mm -hmm. through. But of course, now you guys, the most important people, are now a part of the production. The fans have come here, invitation only. It was uh, a lot of people applying, only a few getting here live. But of course, everyone else can join us via the stream for what should be a day of community games and just a lot of fun in general. Yeah, I mean, well, when you go back to the fun in general, there's lots of stuff going on today. Obviously, you can see on this screen now all these sorts of things that we've got coming up. First game of the day is going to be the fans versus Legacy, so that should be pretty interesting. Uh, any thoughts? you think Legacy might take this one away pretty easily? Well, I mean, when you think about it, it's five pickup players mm. against Team Legacy, so that's going to be a tough ask. Maybe we'll see the Legacy guys try hard. You know, we talked to them actually before we came on, and they were sounding like they really wanted to drive the fans into the ground, which I think is a little bit against the spirit I, I of think, the event. I think what... Uh, the, they were talking a big game. The exact quote that Chuchu said is that I'm going to demolish them is uh, sort of the sentiment. Well, so. look, he's, he's talking a big game. We'll have to wait and check mm. in. We've got plenty of time tonight to see how that goes. Then, of course, we're going to have the fan pick, which is where the fans get to pick the champion. So that might be where we see maybe the new champion, Jin, which, of course, has just been released. Maybe we're going to see some of the Heimerdingers, some interesting shenanigans there. And then we just make it all about you, the fans versus fans games, where in those sort of games, probably going to get crazy. Yeah, I think there's also going to be opportunity for some of the, the guys from Legacy to jump in and, and sort of coach in those fan versus fan games. So that'll be sort of another interesting dynamic, see how that all sort of gets underway. But uh, obviously, as you can see, there's all this... All this fun stuff happening today. There's also like food and all that sort of thing coming on. Um, so it is a great day at the moment so far. And it is, of course, important that at this juncture to thank both Azus, which of course the title sponsor here for this event, but also the Republic of Gamers for everything they've provided. And it should be a great night, a long night, but yeah. I feel like everyone will get a chance to participate. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have all sorts of stuff. And I believe, I'm not mistaken, we're going to throw it over to Jenna just to give you a bit more of an idea and another perspective on what's happening here at the Legacy Gaming House. Hopefully. We'll wait and see if that comes through. But Jordan, so talk to me. What are you most excited to see here about today? Well, I, I mean, it, always that sort of fan interaction with the team is going to be kind of the main highlight of the event. Um, so certainly, I guess that would be uh, what I'm looking for today. I just want to learn a little bit more about some of these new champions. It's going to be all sorts of shenanigans, both fun and maybe even some competitive games, depending on who we have, of course, in the house. But I believe now we're ready to send it over to our host, Jenna. Thank you, guys. Today we'll be hosting a lot of giveaways today, every hour. Um, we'll be giving away some Asus ROG RO gear and also swag bags and some edifier speakers. So do stay tuned in this space. Thank you. All right. So we're going to have all sorts of giveaways. I believe she was talking about the giveaways we're going to have tonight. On the hour after every match, we're going to have giveaways. So there's a lot for you guys to win. You're going to win, of course, our great company because we are going to be joining and guiding you through a very long day of games, but there's going to be fun in there. There might even be some crazy outplays, so a lot to look forward to. Yeah, there. well, I mean, we're going all the way to midnight, so plenty of time to uh, get get some of those shenanigans going on and all that sort of thing. But um, you know, going to have to wait and see for how the, how the sort of the day develops. Yeah, and look, fitting that we're of course in what is effectively a casting couch here. Just chill out, relax. Chilling. It's about a game of chill. It's all about playing it cool today, and we'll see how that transpires. But I think we're going to go to a break and then. Get into the action very soon.
it's just like, man, you gotta have that time where you just like disconnect from the, from the scene, just the, the, the race. Like, and, and it's a race that I've created in my head, you know? But you have to step away from it.
It's your sleeve, but it won't keep me from this heart. And I'll try to carry on again. But I never really knew that it was over. So I said, no, 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 it was supposed to be my pentacle, what did you do to me? I killed I no one to free for champions, I can't believe you're trolling. No, it was supposed to be my pentacle, what did you do to me? I killed I no one to free for champions, I can't believe you're trolling. No, it was supposed to be my pentacle, what did you do to me? I killed and no one to free for champions, I can't believe you're trolling. No, it was supposed to be my pentacle, what did you do to me? I killed and no one to free for champions, I can't believe you're trolling.
and welcome back to the Azus Play It Cool Legacy House Stream event. Sorry for the short break. We were just setting up a couple of final things, letting the fans get to meet the players and get situated. We will have a game very, very shortly. Excited for that Legacy versus fans action. Do you reckon they're going to go full try hard here, Jordan, or do you think they're going to be I, having I, a bit of fun? I mean, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see how the fans go up against Legacy, but um, I dare say the, the Legacy guys might draw it back a little bit and have a bit of fun, maybe pick up some troll champions, something like that, and see how it goes. I heard Prey tell us some attack speed Carthus pre-broadcast. Yes. That's pretty one keen of to my favorites. So Carbon. Be on the watch out for Carbon. I may I may find it hard to console myself when that comes out, mm. but I'm, I'm excited for some crazy stuff, and I'm excited to see the new champion. Jin, of course, has been released. Hasn't been seen in competitive play. Still banned there, so excited mm. to see what he's got going. From what I can tell, gets a lot of attack damage with his passive especially, so could be some interesting alt snipes coming out there as well. Yeah, we were actually playing a game last night that had a gin in it, and 600 AD coming out on you a... You say a gin. We, 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 we can mention who we're talking we about. Can. That was, of course, sure. the Oceanic caster Rusty, who uh, I think he hit 600 612 AD. 612 was... I, I looked in it, it was 612 at one point, and that was sort of in the middle of the game, so could have gone anywhere higher than that. Casual 680 AD, but I'm sure we could talk more about gin later on. What we're going to do now is we're going to pass it over to Jenna for our first giveaway of the night. Take it away, Jenna. Hi guys, it's Jenna Baby and we're here for our very first prize giveaway. Today we're going to be giving away an ASUS ROG G20 signed by the Legacy members of 2016. Also we'll be giving away some League swag pack and also an ROG cap. For a chance to win, hop onto your social media whether it be Facebook or Twitter on or the Twitch chat. Um, tell us in 25 words or less what is your favorite champion and why? Remember to hashtag play it cool and also hashtag Legacy Legion. All right, so already with the competitions and wow, you can actually win something in Twitch chat. That's, that's mm. something different, but that's what we're providing you guys. Twitch chat, Twitter, Facebook, get that hashtag in there and win some cool stuff. What is your favorite champion, Papa Smithy? <sighs> I'm kind of a fiddlesticks man. That was Fiddle. the first champion. Mm. And we're talking, wait, we're February 2016, right? So literally six years ago, playing the fiddlesticks, fiddle in the middle as it was back those days. Just the secret was, you know, then the game was still very young yeah, in February yeah. 2010. You'd walk outside the lane brush and then just ult back into the mid lane. Everyone would come face check, free kills. What about yourself? Those Jordan? were the days. Yeah, no, I'm more of a support player. So at the moment, I'm, I'm liking brand, um, but I think Ooh. overall, you can't you can't really go past Thresh as a support main, can you? Well, I mean, Thresh is definitely the more prototypical support. When yeah. you say brand support, you just mean you like to kill other supports. 
all in them at level what, five. What or... can I say? I mean, as a support, you don't really get a lot of the time uh, in sort of the, the highlight reels, so uh, sometimes you've you got to just take it away, I guess. I mean, Thrash has the highlight reel play, Mad Life, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's true. But I'm not as good as Mad Life. Well, I mean, you're out of practice. You've been uh, playing some other games over yeah, there, a bit yeah. of Counter-Strike, Counter a bit of other things. But League of Legends, is it's where it's at, Jordan. That's what well, I'm I mean, that's here. the game that I, that I started in, so it has a special place in my heart, obviously. And... You know, I can always come back to it, so it's always a good time. Speaking of League of Legends, I think we're going to have game really soon. Remember, we're going to have three different types of game today. The first game type is Legacy versus the fans. So theoretically, could be super one-sided. We mentioned before, could be a bit of fun. So I think we're almost ready to load into Champs. Like, give me one, before we go into Champs, like one prediction here. What do you want to see specifically from the Legacy side? Well, I think we already talked about it, didn't we? The, the, the attack speed Carthus. Oh, oh, boy. Attack speed Carthus. We're starting with... One near and dear to my heart. All right, I believe we can throw it over to Champ Select now, though. And here we go. After some formatting issues. Yeah, we're back here. We're back here, Jordan. Don't. No, they down. just wanted to see more of us. It's all right. <laughs> I can understand. Me too, to be fair. We had our makeup done today. That's so true. We're looking, looking very pretty. suave. Looking pretty. Slightly less white than I am on the OGN stage. We've gone a bit more brazen. I feel a bit more like the Hulk. I've actually been... Uh, Told that I look a bit like Mark Ruffalo. I don't know if I see it, but I mean, I, th I think that's a compliment, so I'll take yeah, it. Sure. I'll take it. All right. Looks like we are now finally into the champion select. So, Blitzcrank first. That's interesting there for Legacy. I like how Tally doesn't have the Legacy tag. That's pretty, that's pretty next level trolling on the side of CRS, Tally, and Tell. I don't know if we should be plugging all those sponsors, but we're here for the fun, Jordan. We're here for. A good time. As speaking of good times, I see Blitzkang and Bard already locked in. So already, no idea where these champions are going. Well, I'm sensing it might be something like a support team comp coming out here. Maybe maybe they'll take 180k and a bunch of supports. Who knows? Yeah, you say 180 carry. I don't know if it's going to be the build-up Lulu situation. I think we're going to go... Maybe it's a B theme. we got Bard, we got Blitzkrank. Who's to say? And then, you know, or we have no information on what... The fans, who of course are on the blue side this time, are doing. We see a Jin locked in, though, so mm -hmm. already we're going to have to scour our brains to remember the names of some of those skills. Mm. We'll do our best, but we know what they do. Dancing that's Grenade, I remember that Dancing one. Grenade, nailed it. Yeah. Curtain Call is the Curtain, ultimate. That's it, yeah. And then there's a Trap, and then there's the W. Yeah, <laughs> which we can't remember, but that's all right. It'll be burned into our minds by the end of the day. I dare Speaking say we're going to see a lot of Jin today. Uh, we almost saw an Amumu, and... The support theme mm. seems to be pretty strong on the side of Legacy. Or the orange theme. Maybe they're picking orange champs. Not no, that we're going to have to wait until really the last Oh, there moment. you go. Attack Carbon, speed Karthus, please. Carbon did promise some fun with the Karthus. So we might be seeing some jungle. It does break the theme a little bit. We have been seeing champions purely in the support role in the first three. Will Choo Choo's be taking the Bard mid? Will we see Blitzcrank mid, an old favorite? Twitch jungle is a possibility. Who knows, you know, that we could be seeing swaps between these players. We could just be seeing creative lane assignments. Obviously, the Legacy boys are going to come in big favorites. They just picked up another win in the OPL yesterday, so watch those VODs if you haven't caught them. We can pay more attention to the blue side now. Malphite, Jin, Siam, mm. Leona. I mean, this is a theoretically, a big front line for this Jin to show us really what this champion's all about. We don't have that much information. There's no competitive games to draw on. Today yeah. might be a bit of an educational stream about just the limits of a champion like Jin. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have, like, the most amount of mobility. We're not talking, like, Vayne levels or Ezreal levels. Sure. So he does get a little bit of uh, movement speed off his abilities, but uh, really, he does need to be careful with sort of with his positioning here. And, of course, you can see there's lots of catch, actually, on the side of Legacy. So if he sort of mispositions a little bit, um, he is going to need those tanky frontliners to really jump in there and protect him. I mean, catch is the name of this game across the side. Whether we see the Ari or the LeBlanc locked in, we're talking Malphite ultimate, Scion ultimate, or just Scion's suite of CC. Uh, Leona, of course, famous for engage. So the tanky frontliners are definitely present on both sides. What a legacy going to round up this draft with? I'm not even going to be... My, an my analytical hat is definitely to my side today. I'm yeah. not expecting too many LCK level team oh. comps or... Strong Siege necessarily coming through. That might even be a Jungle Twitch for all we know. Jungle Twitch is viable. I mean, Jungle Twitch has had its times of viability. I don't know yeah, if okay. now is the best okay, time. Sure. See, look, you heard that jungles were in the meta. You were talking about, you, you've obviously heard 80 carry junglers, they're all the rage. Kindred Mate, and Grace. Grace. Let's go. I mean, there's certain parts of their kits that make them maybe a little bit of a safer jungler than Twitch, but stealth from the jungle has always been something that's yeah, been exactly. a true terror throughout the whole course of League of Legends history.
And it's also a little bit di more difficult now to get deep wards, so it is going to be, uh, I guess, more important, I guess, to, to really track where that Twitch is so that he doesn't sort of just pop out of a bush somewhere and destroy you. And, you know, fans might think, okay, but Twitch has stealth. What do you mean by deep wards against Twitch? But remember, stealth is short duration, mm. so you're not warding necessarily the same spot you would against, say, a Jarvan, for example. Yep. You're warding deep into those camps. Ward those Raptors. Ward those buffs. Just so you have an idea of what side of the jungle is on, and then maybe see that Twitch enter stealth as we're counting down. Really, we could have some creative stuff going on. At this point, we're not expecting any swaps, so Nunu top. We're expecting to see a Bard mid lane, which could be built anyway. AP Attack Bard's speed, right. AP, AP Bard, really, for the big Qs. Of course, mm. the ult doesn't scale on AP, but and the Magical Journey doesn't either. But uh, if I know anything about League of Legends troll games, and I do, just to be clear, mm. it is kind of my reputation in normal games to play that AP oh, Trindamir. Yeah. The rumble in the jungle last night. The rumble in the jungle. I don't think that's troll. I actually think that's super, super good. Of oh. course, we're just waiting for the couple of minutes for that delay timer, but uh, if I know anything about AP champions, it doesn't matter if you have AP ratios, what you do. You build the Nashor's Tooth, you build the Luden's Echo, you build things like that that have their own AP ratios, and then legit AP pick. That's that's how I conceptualize these things. Well, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see until uh, we get into the game to see how that sort of develops, but obviously, I guess we can talk a little bit more about that attack speed, Karthus. Oh, no, not even. Nope, it's been it's denied. Not, it's been denied. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot. Twitch. Oh, well. I mean, look, I've been really hyped up for it, so it's kind of on my brain. I hope we get to see it at least once today. I mean, we're going to see plenty of the Legacy boys, of course, of the three match types, the fan pick, the Legacy versus the fans, and, of course, fans versus fans. Two out of three, we're going to see the Legacy players. We've already planted that seed in their mind of the tax speed card. So I know it's going to come soon. We're about a minute, minute and a half away of mm. getting into game, just so you guys know. So we're just here rap session with you guys about what we remember about these team comps or really about the meta. We're on 6.2. Uh, 6.2 isn't sin and competitive till maybe next week or maybe perhaps the NALCS this week. Not 100% sure on that. I know you've been mostly focusing away from the league, but what's kind of been your takeaway on the 2016 patch when you've been doing your research for today? Well, I mean, look, I, I've been obviously playing a lot of that support as I've been, you know, having a bit of time in league. And i got to say, I like the, the new uh, support items, obviously. Frost Queen's Claim. Frost oh Queen's boy. Claim. And that's why I'm playing Brand, obviously. You say it's a support item. I see, well, it, I see it everywhere. <laughs> okay. If the Lulu's top lane, if... Uh, it's designed to be a support item. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just fantastic. I love it. It is very strong. Extra catch, so... I mean, I've seen your bard sometimes. So I've seen your brand. Yeah. Sometimes the EQ, the stun, doesn't come off so well. But if you slow them down first with those spooky ghosts, mm. get that pick. Much easier to hit your skill shots. Maybe you should throw in a Rhylize there as well. Well, I do get a Rhylize. Okay. Yeah. So you're, doing, you're doing it right on the brand. Yeah, I just like to be really annoying with brand. You know, everyone's slowed basically 24 7 during the team. Well, fight. mission successful with Rhylize and Frost Queen's claim mm. for sure. And then in lane, that Sona, if those squishy supports, Soraka gets out of, uh, out of position. Out of position. Easy mm. catch coming through. So support, Frost Queen's claim. We're going to see plenty of those tonight. And mm. again, it's not just the supports. Mid laners, like so the Lulu top even. Maybe even some junglers. I try it on jungle just because extra gold sounds great to me. But Sure. You know, Frost Queen's claim might be one of the big stories of today. Well, I mean, the other thing sort of that I want to see is a bit more Graves. You know, obviously he's okay. very strong Where at the moment. though? Because he's everywhere, Everywhere, right? everywhere. Graves support, you want to see? The only thing I haven't seen is Grave support. So... In my solo queue experiences or dynamic queue. Well, I guess it sounds so. like no one's ruining a solo queue experiences if That's you haven't true. seen Graves support. But we might see it today because obviously we're seeing some of these troll champions. The sort of dream. Coming out, so. Well, again, we're waiting to see exactly how this legacy comp lines up. We mm. see Blitzcrank and Bard on the same team, so the the Bard is piloted by Choo Choo. So mm. does that mean mid lane Bard? I guess it doesn't necessarily need to. Mm. We might even see some creative lane assignments. There's no reason. Choo Choo needs to be the mid laner in all the games today. Maybe for this first game, we can assume that and yeah. hope for some Lich Bane Bard shenanigans. But waiting for a bit more information on the game. Believe we're going to be loading in any second now. Mm. And then Jin. Jin. Jin is the other story here. We're seeing him for the first time on the stream today. Hopefully, we're going to see plenty of him. As you mentioned, can get big AD numbers and, of course, has AD ratios on his abilities. Even though they're not the highest, they're not, say, one AD ratio. When it's 0.5 of 600 AD, That's a lot of we're still talking about a lot of damage. And yeah. that, that curtain call, that last bullet that crits does so, so much damage. So, hoping for some big snipes. Not being piloted by King just yet, but okay. We're finally into our first game of the day, Legacy House Stream. On the blue side, we have the challenges. These, of course, are the players here that have come to support Team Legacy. And Team Legacy themselves are over 
on the purple side. Yeah, and actually, one thing that I really want to see is um, sort of a gin comp where everyone gets attack speed, get, gets movement speed from their abilities and sees how much attack damage you can actually get onto that heavy. Uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see until maybe later today. 30 seconds until minions spawn. Oh well. A little bit of a skirmish coming out here in mid, but not a whole lot of damage going across just yet. We are going to see Ju. I don't know if he's got the hook, if he's used it yet, but uh, there is going to be oh, a He's, he's going to be in a bit of trouble, but the uh, the hook's not there. The double flash coming out there from Tally and King, but he is going to get the revive passing. King might be in a little bit of trouble here if Geeson turns around. Not quite going to happen just yet. There you go, the damage. And that is going to be a kill going over to the, uh, the fans. One for one apiece at the moment. Geeson, though, he's running towards the wrong turret. He's going to be in a world of hurt here. Legacy putting down the pain on those fans. The Legacy start with the early kills. Leona not involved in that skirmish. Actually decided to defend the bottom lane out of turret. Uh, bottom lane out of turret looks very safe, so good job there. But uh, not involved in what turned out to be a 5v4 and giving Le Team Legacy an edge early. Oh boy, could be a long game here as we can start seeing the jungle. And it is, of course, the Twitch jungle that we spoke about. Yeah, Tally uh, looking like, uh, oh, is he going to go top? top going to be taking those uh, Krugs away. So they're starting on a bound. Red. Starting red's interesting. All the players are playing their listed role. Chuchu's is the mid lane bard. You can hear the cries of glee already from the other room as the players are already well into this game. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be an interesting bot lane. I mean, this is sort of the, the one that you, you like to see. You know, the Blitzcrank and the Nautilus or the Blitzcrank and the Thresh. That sort of fun stuff coming out. Hooks for days. Hook City, I think, is what we used to call it. Hook City. What? I remember Blitzcrank Leona was always a favorite lane. Blitzcrank Alistair, of course, from DidC play over in OGN many years ago as the shut down the enemy AD lane. Again, we're looking for information and data points on specifically the gym. He does get that burst of move speed and does, of course, have that massive strike on just his fourth auto. He has the reload timer. Think Graves but with four shots on the and two. Is, we're seeing a really big duel up top, but Yummy. Nunu is going to do Nunu things. If you remember yeah. Nunu top from your days, I consume do. Snowball, consume Snowball, and Snowball now has that shorter cooldown on patch 6.2, so I think old Nunu, but uh, somehow even more annoying. Yeah, I have very vivid memories of playing up against a top Nunu. Are you sure there's a not nightmares? Memories well, is what you want to call it? Yeah, them? no, he had the Nunu bot skin as well, and he was basically just spamming life and queuing uh, the yes. waves all the time. So, uh, yeah, not fun times at all. Fun times, but it looks like on your screen you can see Scion jump. Back. Another favorite. This was something that Soul Strikes was actually doing a lot when he used to play for the Direwolves a year ago in the spring season. Jungle Scion. It's quite a force right there. So far, Jin hasn't died in the Blitzcrank Nautilus lane, but I feel like around level 6. Remember, we do have Legacy's AD carry, the new AD carry king. Playing this Nautilus, oh boy. Here comes a gang, Carbon coming in towards the bot lane. Ranga, is that how he pronounced his name? Looks like it. Flippy actually gets caught by the hook there. He's going to be in a lot of trouble. I think he still might have Flash, but uh, they're going to get the first blood, in fact. It's Flip around. Now Ranga in a bit of trouble. He's going to flash out of there. Flying Ju not quite on the cooldown with that uh, hook just yet. So Ranga will get out there. It's a one for one. Actually a pretty good result there in a gank situation, you have to say. Yeah, meanwhile in the top lane, Geeson, he's a pretty low, but Quake is there. He's going to finish off that kill on Nunu. See that we're definitely playing fan games. What awards. Elfish guy. Oh, wow. Not a serious. Oh, he's going in again. Fighting for days. He's not oh. quite going to get the damage off. Flying Ju, I think he might have got a level up there just yeah. to save him. Dangerous game, potentially a level up. Oh boy, sometimes oh. things go all your ways. Finally seen this mid lane matchup, LeBlanc versus Bard. Never thought you'd say that out loud, but we're seeing it here today. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, stranger things have happened, I guess. You've seen Graves in the jungle now, so basically expect to see anything these days. Well, that anything is this Bard. We don't have any information on what way he's taking this build. AP would be the most delicious way, it means that of course, well, the health pickups would be big, the Q harass would be big, but no other AP ratios mean could be attack speed, could be AD, could be Trinity Force. We have no idea what to expect from this mid lane bar. Yeah, a bit of a duel coming out here in towards the uh, the jungle here. Quakey's in a bit of trouble, and there is going to be the hook oh. coming out from Flying Jew. It's a pretty easy kill in the end there for Legacy. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Tally going to go for a 1v1 up against Geese, and just uh, dominating with that Nunu bot. Yeah, the Nunu power spike already hit a level five. That snowball's only gonna go down and cool down, I believe with 40% CDR, just over two seconds. So uh, back in the day, you had about three second windows. Now it's down to two, so. Yeah, again, coming out into the mid lane. Oh. 
He was predicting that, but uh, LeBlanc just didn't jump far enough. I feel like Flying Jew is basically auditioning for Blitzcrank in the OPL. He's like, guys, I can play the Blitzcrank. I'll make it work. My roams will come off, so we'll try and keep tabs on his hook ratio here. Anything above 60%. It's going to be pretty impressive stuff. As I think it's been all right so far. That's probably the first one I've seen him miss. Carbon's counter jungling his Twitch, which is scary. Oh, no, no, that's the friendly that's jungle. jungle. I want to see some counter jungling in Twitch, because Carbon, aggressive jungler to begin with, but I, I don't think he's worried about the matchup, even though it is the tanky Scion against Twitch. Yeah, I mean, this is probably actually a reasonable situation for Carbon to be able to, uh, to counter jungle, because Scion's already under a lot of pressure from those roams from bot lane. Um, you know, if Carbon gets in there, gets another kill, then Scion's really going to be in a lot of trouble. But uh, speaking of trouble, Flying Jew, he's coming in very hot into the bot lane. Flip is going to get stunned up there just a little bit. He's still uh, surviving for the moment, but Carbon dropping all that damage down on top of him. The Ignite is down as well. He's going to go down there. Jew's got the hook up as well. Ranga might be in a bit of trouble now as well. We are going to see Carbon getting all the damage across towards him, and that is a double kill in the bot lane for Legacy. And the big thing to take away there was really nice. Oh boy, it's the fight on him. Choo Choo's super low. I think Choo Choo's is in trouble here. He's going to be able to get the health pick up there. And uh, forces the flash actually out of LeBlanc. Perhaps a little bit lucky there. No mana on LeBlanc. Wasn't able to close out that kill. But uh, Flying Chew, you can see, come in from behind. He's going to be able to close it out there for Legacy. So, wow, 9-3 up already. So, so close. The big takeaway there was specifically LeBlanc felt she needed flash away from the creep minion aggro. She was worried she was going to go down just to creeps. Not expecting too much armor or magic resist on the LeBlanc play. Just really heavy on the AD. But... Really nice cleanup from Blitzcrank to pick up the kill, as Tally's not so interested in minion waves or turrets at this point. He wants to proxy farm the champion. Well, I don't know if that's the same thing as Malphite. Dance off, <laughs> I like it. Bit of manners from Geeson over here. But this is kind of the hell Malphite is in. Whenever he's low on mana, he's going to find it hard to push the minions, and he's respecting Tally's range here pretty crazily. Tally is uh, level 7, so he's got the ultimate. Geeson has also got his ulti there, but you feel perhaps Tally might be able to tower dive this one. Carbon's been spotted. Ward has been in that brush, but oh boy, not really many safe places to go here, the Malphite. Yeah, King gonna jump in Ooh. there with a the flash. He tries to hook, but uh, not quite gonna land it. Geeson flashing out of the way of that one. He's gonna get exhausted up and has to burn the ultimate to try and get out of here. Actually, King deciding to tower dive here. This not might not be a bad idea. He's got the backup coming in, flying dual carbon. It's carbon to pick it up, and now he's got himself five kills already. Scion coming in through the jungle as well. Fights everywhere across the board. Tally down in the bot lane, having a bit of trouble. We are gonna see Quakey's once again in the world of hurt up against Flying Jew, who seems to be just following him around the map. And he's gonna go down there. Now Zenstar getting ult there, Viking, Carbon and Jew trying to close up onto what is this one, Zenstar, the passive is going to pop, Carbon's actually going after him, and he's going to be able to, to take down that kill as well. Carbon is proving you do not need to take down jungle camps to pick up Devour stacks, just farm those champions, True. Carbon, doing it with a plum, 7-0-1. Just to be clear, there's been 8 minutes in the game, and Carbon has 7 kills. Doing alright for himself, getting that uh, kills per minute up, some stat padding, perhaps. Can see that it's going to be Nashor's Tooth coming through from the bar, so attack speed's the story. Geeson is really slow catching down King, but King has... Look at these starter steps, he's not respecting that Q damage. Uh, you got to remember, Geeson doesn't have his ultimate up here, he used it in the last fight, and uh, he should still be able to close this one out with the, the Qs, but in the bot lane we can see Carbon. He's going to actually get shut down there by the Leona. King's still running away from Geeson here. great chases on. Geeson has no boots, so... Uh, I don't know if he's even going to be able to catch King. Geeson has. Oh, oh, he gets it! That was surprising amount of damage. Maybe some extra points in the queue than was respected from the starter stepping mm. from King. Usually the starter stepping is about cancelling auto attacks, but no, just manners as he walked away gleefully on the Nautilus, but eventually mown down by the Rock. Yeah, here comes Ju once again into the mid. He's going to have to get there very quickly because Ju's is in a lot of trouble. We can see Quakey's as well backing him, but backing things up there for Zenstar, but uh, I don't think we're going to see a kill coming out of this one. Ju perhaps might be in a little bit of trouble. Everything going very low at the moment. Zenstar is actually ignited. He might go down. No, the last tick not quite there. And everyone surviving for now, but the, the fight is still going on. Quakey's finally managing to find a kill there. It's on to uh, Chu Chu's. Now they're going to come in. It's Carbon coming from behind. He's going to get one shot off on towards the LeBlanc. Now he's going to have to deal with Quakey's and flip. It's Carbon doing a lot of damage, but now he has to fall back. King coming in for the backup. Geese in there as well. Everyone's having a bit of a fun, fun time in the mid. We can see the snipes coming out there from Jin. Not going to be needed because we see Malphite picking up the kill there. King, in the end, is going to take down LeBlanc. 
And uh, is the fight finally over, Papa Smithy? Uh, it seems to be. You can tell from the items that Legacy are really looking to push it on the early game. All Dorans all the time going for cost-effective stats. Carpenter's not out of this fight, apparently. Yeah, Tally's in now as well, getting himself a, a bit of fun here. Geeson is doing a lot of damage over there to Carbon, but Carbon going to be able to jump away there. And uh, picks himself up a kill. Meanwhile, off screen, you saw Tally picking one up. King now in a bit of trouble here for Ranga. Seems like the fighting never stops. Tally going to chase Ranga now. Trying to get some revenge there for uh, his support down in the bot lane. And here we see the new cooldown of these snowballs. They never stop coming out, but Tally's actually respecting the brush. That's something I wouldn't expect in this level of play, but scared of that, Leona. The CC keeps coming. The Tally flash ult. Yeah, here we go. Flying Jew as well, getting in towards the mix. Tally just getting shut down by that brush, as you uh, sort of mentioned previously. Um, but now let's see whether or not Flying Jew can get away. Obviously, that overdrive going to slow him down a little bit at the end of uh, at the end of its uh, channel. But he seems to be all right for now. Level of bloodthirsty in this game, off the chart. Respect what you're doing over here. Trying to play by play, just constant action after yeah, action. Yep. And it's not over yet. Yeah, Jew Jew does get a bit of damage over there to Zenstar, but Jew's going to hit the hook. Unfortunately, on the mimic. The man with the flips walking up here against a lot of CC. Yeah, good little lock coming out there from Choo Choo's. He's going to slow things down just a little bit. Gets a nice Q off there. It's going to slow down Flip. And he actually goes down to the Ignite from King. So another pick up for Legacy. They might be able to push this tower off the back of that. Maybe we'll actually see some objective play. It took about 12 minutes. There's about 12 minions being taken down cumulatively, but <laughs> maybe not. All right, another fight coming out here. We do. It's Blitzcrank getting one. Leona will find another one. Now we can see Zenstar just jumping in there, but uh, Carbon is in, and that's not going to spell a, a very good result at all for the fans. Choo Choo's in a bit of trouble here from Ranga, but I think Carbon is going to be able to take down Ranga before Ranga is going to be able to take down Choo Choo's, and that is going to be the case. Carbon picking up his 12th kill of the game. What a beast. Yeah, 12 kills, had that Devourer for a long time. I believe it was four kills when he picked up the Devourer. So Devourer stacks despite the 41 CS. Going to be super high carbon. It's going to be spotted by a ward. He's actually going to stop here as we see Malphite starts channeling the back, but it's going to stick in lane. Wow, some CSing. This is new. Crazy. Those aren't champions there, Carbon. Get away. They're not yeah. getting any Devourer stacks. They're not getting no, any right. champion kills. He's seeing sense. He's gone now. Here we go. Geeson trying to get in a bit of damage there, and this is not looking good at all for Carbon. He is going to pop the uh, stealth, and he might be able to actually get out of here. Does manage to sneak around and uh, he'll be safe. Yeah, only one of the curtain call bullets hitting him. It wasn't that fourth or crucial one that does the most damage to Carbon. Returning to lane, returning to CSing. What a world we live in. That was a good joke, Papa Smithy, because, uh, well, we're going to see another fight coming out here. It's Geeson getting hit up there by Flying Two. Flip now in a bit of trouble as well. King on him. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see a kill coming out of this, though. Geeson, oh, he's going to bring a, a, an ultimate coming on towards those guys. But wow, these hooks from Flying Two just. On point at the moment, he's hitting everything. Flip is going to be okay for now, but they need to be careful that Jew doesn't turn around and hook them. The cooldown will be up. Carp gets one onto Jin there. And now Jew on his own. Zenster coming in for the, the backup. Speaking of backup, you know, we can see Choo Choo's getting the ultimate there. And now he's going to try and get a, a good crew off here. Not quite going to land the stun. It's Choo Choo's though now in a one versus two. He's in trouble. They're going to be tower diving him. It is going to be Zenster to close it out as well. So. Things coming along a little bit there for the fans. They are getting a bit of damage across, but uh, still, you'd have to say Legacy sitting in the driver's seat. A really nice juggling of aggro between the fans. Usually that's one of those communication things that's one of the last things you pick up when you're you know, used to speaking on comms and professional level play. It's a professional level turret dive in my estimation. It comes off really nicely as uh, we're just watching down the bottom lane, just having a bit of spare time again. We haven't had much. It's been a breathless 14 minutes, but... Get to look at the items, and uh, everyone's still on the AP except for Twitch. There you go, Cal Tally up in the top lane. Ranger does look like in a bit of trouble. You can see that spell thieves coming out the slow, but uh, not going to be enough. Yep, the AP already piling on for Nunu. That had that Frost Queen's claim for a little bit. Now some more AP. If you do stack the AP, even though the ratio was slightly nerfed, just the consistent damage. The fact you can't hide away from this Nunu means that uh, you need to respect him because even though they're little chunks, they just keep coming. King is surprisingly squishy for a Nautilus. He's obviously going for that AP build, and it is working out for them at the moment. We can see Quakey's having a little bit of trouble under that tower. He's going to be taken down there by Carbon. Another one on the board for him. He's up to 15. 15 kills. Not even 15 minutes. Oh, just the Scion. Passive, though. And look at this. Objective pushing. Another thing we haven't seen much of. I feel like they're going to stop these objectives. There are no kills when you kill Tyrus. It's not quite the same feel. No. The bloodthirst that you get from taking down those champions. Legacy knows all about that. 26 kills in 15 minutes. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of kills going across this game, as you can obviously tell. 
Shuchi is trying to defend this turret in mid. I dare say he's going to have a little bit of trouble. I mean, with that Nashos tooth, though, he actually has pretty good wave here. Remember the Meeps. Once yeah. you start picking up some of those chimes, they do apply that AoE, so not bad. It's on the backside. Carbon tried, but tried to fight off a little bit too much. And speaking of that... Yeah, there's Flying Jew once again with a really nice hook coming out from there. He's going to spell the end of the Jin. But also coming out here from Choo Choo's. Don't know if he's going to be able to save King here, though. He goes down in the end to Ranga, but uh, Zenstar in a bit of trouble as well. He goes down to Bard. Looking like uh, Ranga... Let's see, Choo's going to get the hook, but do they have enough damage? Gonna find out, Choo Choo's. We're learning more and more about attack speed. AP Bard is doing, what, about 100 health a hit? Not Ooh. enough. Nice double stun, but not enough to take down. The tanky Leo. Yeah, not quite. Ranga starting to really scale into this game. You can see the locker. That's actually going to be really scaling, effective. Yeah, well, Tally coming down here. He's going to have a pretty good time. Oh boy, slap Eason. fight. Yeah, it's, it's going slow. I think Tally's being a, a gentleman. I did like that Tally channeled the Q as he did that last hit, so it kind of looked like he just ate the Malphite. <laughs> Not an interaction you can do, but appreciate the visuals nonetheless. It's Carbon. Yeah, Carbon coming towards mid here. Quake, he's just going to try and get the turret, but uh, actually look at this back off off from Carbon. It's not bad at all. Yeah, and look at all that turret damage coming down onto Quake. Oh well boy, good call. Is he gonna get There's one, any? two. Doesn't matter in the end. It's cleaned up. It is, but so still getting a damage across to King. Might have been an opportunity there for a kill onto him, but not quite. Gonna have enough in the end there, and there you go, Flying G once again. I feel like every time he's on screen, I see him hitting a hook. And there you go, another kill going to Legacy. Audition so far looking pretty good for Flying G on the Brits camp. The only sort of champion here that we take seriously. Probably not gonna see any jungle devourer twitch in the OPL. Not quite say the devourer yet. You can tell from that purple icon mm. that he hasn't quite finished it up, but can't be too far away. Certainly not. I mean, he's got a lot of kills in the bank there, and a reasonable amount of CS as well. So. He's sitting somewhere pretty close. Well, this is, again, a bit more legacy style. Choo Choo's split pushing in the bot lane. The bard pick, maybe not the Zed yeah. that we might be expecting for that split push, but Choo's will make it work. I mean, Bard's got a reasonable escape with his uh, magical journey. Conditional, but exciting and yeah. hilarious nonetheless. Yeah. Look at this objective play, though. You can tell the fans have had enough of all these scraps. After 31 deaths, I can understand that. They actually group in mid and pick up some much needed objective goal. One of the big things with the 2016 patch is that objective gold feels like the most important objective you can pick by that. I mean, turrets as Hook City continues, but not quite the follow-up game. Yeah, well, King coming in there from the side. Carbon as well. He's going to get focused down straight away by the fans. King is now trying to follow up and back up his teammate, but uh, they're going to get a kill off it. And already a double kill actually going for the Legacy guys now. King needs to get out of here. He's in a bit of trouble. Geeson trying to chase him up. No ultimate on the side of Malphite there. He's already used it to get, take out Carbon. But Legacy, they're going to be forced to fall back here with the exception of Choo Choo's, who's just slowly but surely whittling them down with those auto attacks that you've been speaking about. The Meeps coming up with a lot of damage. Action going across the, the screen everywhere. King having a 1v1 up against Geeson. And uh, looks like, uh, I mean, I want to say the fight's over, but it's not quite because it just keeps going. Geeson is going to do more damage. Well, it's worth noting the only people building offensive items were dead that whole fight, both Flip and Zenster, the LeBlanc and the Jin, weren't there to do damage. The rest of these guys are tanked. That's why this fight is completely taking forever. When the likes of Twitch exploded, it's, oh boy, we see a turret coming down and maybe finally a kill. Oh, King not quite having the damage to finish off Geeson there, but uh, goes down for his trouble. See Leona very proud. Of the champion mastering, get out there. Not quite the emote spam that was that was available around Worlds when he did just put out. The team you're supporting, Carbon's looking to open up again. Yeah, not going to be able to get that though. The flash coming out from Crazy. Oh, he's in a bit of trouble now. It's very difficult to do anything up against a LeBlanc when you're Wait a, a for the tick damage though. Yep. Gets yeah, exactly. the trade kill. And this is a nice little strategy coming out there. The teamwork coming out from Legacy, Empire Nunu, and uh, obviously the Blitzcrank follow up. Empire. Reference that some of our fans, of course, won't know back in the day, one of the old names of the team that eventually became known as Gambit Gaming was Team Empire, known for their Nunu support shenanigans. Back in the good old days. Back in the good old days. 2012 representing. Uh, it was a while ago. <laughs> Might even have been 2011. That's how old we are here. We're being fuzzy duddies. Let's talk about 2016 League. 2016 League includes Tally taking the enemy team's red and Quakey's, he's going to chance upon this, but uh, I dare say there's not going to be a whole lot he can Who's do about it. Who's chancing upon who is clearly yeah. the question here. It is. Tally with the red buff and those ice balls is going to make things uh, very slow in, in terms of the movement speed there. So, it's quite a bit of cooldown reduction. The damage is there as well. Speaking of damage, choose making us a believer of the bard mid lane. Whoa! There's a missed, a missed hook from Flying G. I thought I'd point it out because you don't see it very often. Quakey's, he's going to miss the ulti there from Cyan, but puts him in a reasonable position to try and 
Get a knock up on these guys. Not really going to work out for him as we can see. Choo Choo's coming in there with the auto attacks. Going to take him out. Quakey's now though. Going to follow things up. Really not going to be able to uh, do much off the back of that flip. Getting that ultimate coming across. Does a bit of damage to Flying Jew, but really not enough. Carbon in the back line. Finding a double kill. Looking for the triple. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it here. Geeson doing a ton of damage in response. And King just standing there. Geeson has to fall back here. Carbon, he's going to survive though. Crazy juke though from Carbon. He has to say to Devour as well. The damage is might even turn here. He can't take more than one spell, he'll go down. Makes it look easy. Picks up the kill. Finally an ace for Legacy. Yeah, and uh, that is going to be the time now for them to start to kind of push towards this. Not going to be able to get it. The respawn timers are pretty low actually here for the fans, so it might be a little difficult. The respawn time is higher from 30 minutes to 40, but when we're talking about just 21 minutes into the game, not oppressively long, one person will be enough to defend. One of these hard to take objectors in the inhibitor turret. King, oh boy. Well, that wasn't a very good decision, was it? I mean, it looked cool, though. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you have to go for those Zonia poses. Zach, of course, the famous champion. The swag where you, plays. Where you go for the swag plays. Very nice swag play, but uh, it was only ever going to lead to the death of King. It certainly was. I mean, uh, didn't work out too well at all for him. Carmen oh. Oh, taking a ton of damage there from Zenster. The snipes coming out, but it's not going to be enough. Carmen survives. Be able to get away. Those jungles, uh, those jungle side, both friendly and foe, pretty scary places for the fans to walk into. So smartly going to walk away from them. We haven't had a dragon in 21 minutes. I guess that's not a surprise. We actually see this in competitive games sometimes. But uh, even in the fan game, finally killing some of those neutral minions are the fans. Yeah, this is going to be the first dragon of the game going over to the fans who expect legacy. Not really contesting this. I don't think they really actually have any idea that this is happening. They don't even care. Meanwhile, they're in it for the kills at the moment. Flying Jew jumping in there with another hook. Carbon is going to find one. Choo Choo's, uh, no, brother. Oh, yeah, it was Choo Choo's on the bar. He's going to find that one. Tally in a bit of trouble here. He's going to go down to Zenstar. Double kill for him, in fact. And whether or not he's going to be able to get away is, I guess, the real question here. Nice little dash. But uh, King moving very quickly at the moment. Nautilus ult is available. Finally used. Choo Choo's now going to get the stun off. Oh. And that was a lot of damage coming out of that Q. You never expect the AP Bard, but the deletion damage is real. Very nice pickup from Choo Choo's there. Don't think Legacy is going to be pushing for objectives, though. More bloodthirsty play. Choo Choo's just content to get minions for the moment, but Quakey's, he's going to bring the fight to Choo Choo's. Not sure if this is the best idea. We can see King coming around from behind. Curtain Call comes out there from Flip. But uh, the, the hook, this is actually from Flying Juke. Lots of damage going across to King. He's in a little bit of trouble now. Quakey's, are they going to follow him through the magical journey? Quakey's is at least. Now he's in a one versus two situation. This is going to be a little dangerous for him. The teleport coming in as well from one of the legacy players. And, uh, this is not looking good at all. Cyan goes down. The Nunu has been channeled, but no one's going to walk into that just yet. And we see Geeson actually getting a nice little knock up onto two players. Everyone's going to follow Choo Choo's through that magical journey, I'm sure. Flying Choo is going to go down there as well. Like a reasonable passage of play there for the fans. Yeah, coming back, only 10,000 gold behind. See, Leon is not done with this though, and Carbon though. He's the one who has all the gold. You can see deleting a Malphite like he's nothing. 23 kills. Just piling on that damage. Only really the Vong can deal with Carbon. Yeah, well, Vong's gonna get in uh, a bit of trouble right now. She takes a little damage there and he's gonna try and get out. But uh, I think Carbon just too shot her. Yeah, that looked like it, about three auto attacks. Choo Choo's still not done, picking up more kills. Low on health. Yeah, Flip trying to follow up on that, but not quite going to be able to chase him down. Obviously, that mobility there for, uh, for him, not quite going to be enough. Does dodge the uh, the ultimate coming out from Bard, but is he going to be able to dodge the ultimate from Nautilus? Nope. I dare say no. Because he's going to get hit by that one. Carver coming in for the, uh, the kill steal, I'm sure. Let's see if he takes it. So you're trying to make him die to poison. That's some more style points on the car. But Nautilus will pick up the kill on the backside. So that's not done. Good flash coming out there from King. He's going to dodge the uh, ultimate. But uh, really, the, the player to watch at the moment is Carbon. He's taking down another kill for himself. King going to do another little Zonya's play. Um, he keeps him alive for a moment, but not quite going to be oh, enough there. Boy, so you see uh, Scion closing him out. King goes down on the backside, not respecting that Scion pass. If you'd think as an AD carry main, he'd be used to Scions getting in his face and buying time but didn't respect it went down as a result will we ever see a baron play probably not not sure we should probably What's keep a baron, baron probably keep a baron counter for the night because we're not going to see too many of those well so far we're at one dragon in 25 minutes so well another fight coming out here geeson has found himself in a world of hurt tally and jew obviously not the most damaging players on the, the side of legacy but uh, it doesn't really matter when you can't get away 
Also, it is a death cap, Morella Nomicon. Frost yep. Queen's claim CDR boots Nunu, so he's certainly got a bit of damage going on. There's another little Zonia play coming out. This time from Flying Jew. Everyone's looking for star points. Of course, why wouldn't you? Exactly. Speaking of star points, I think Choo Choo's just missed his Zonia play, which not necessarily was a Zonia, but you know what I mean. No Zonia's going for magic penetration build here, sir. The Wits End is Carbon wants some kills. He does. He's going to get one there, but it's not going to be enough for him to be able to survive here. We are going to see him going down. Jin picks up that kill. The Snipe's coming out here as well. He's not really going to be able to do much there. Has to cancel it and fall back. Ranga is trying to get away here, but I, there's no way. There's no way that he gets out of here. He actually managed to find a kill, which is quite reasonable. But uh, the follow-up tally was quite good in that sense. Gets a double, double kill for himself. Now they're going to go in towards Quakey in the mid. Watch some dead bodies. Scars of the last fight. The current fight, though, Scion is so tanky. Another Zonia's play from King. Might go down, though. Enough? Oh, shot? <laughs> not quite. It's going to be uh, now Quake. He's trying to do some damage on towards uh, Tally, but obviously you can see those minions there for Tally. He's just going to eat them up and... Tally gives good. very few cares. He does not. And now Neeson is going to join the fray. Is he going to be able to ulti? No, he doesn't have the ulti on cooldown. If he did, it was going to be a dead king, but uh, the, the movement's too good from King with that uh, Spider-Man play. Finally a time to catch our breath, people back away. That means more items will come in. Look at this innovative build from Choo Choo's. We noted the Nationals tooth earlier. Rage Blade, Wit Sense, a bit of magic penetration there. Full attack speed. Gonna be good wave clear, surprisingly coming out of the mid lane bar. Not sure I can be convinced of it, but uh, uh, yeah. it's a uh, normal game special. As you do. Anyway, Choo Choo, speaking of him, he's gonna get caught up there. Really not a whole lot that he could do in that situation. Down Tally trying to do the uh, bush play with the ulti, but really not gonna work out. There's Insta jumping in. But uh, it's going to be Quake. He's really leading the charge at the moment. He did get hooked by uh, Flying Jew, but obviously he's quite tanky. He'll survive for a while. Goes down in the end there. Now Rangan needs a little bit of backup from his team. He's not going to get it either. Flip trying to get in there and get a little bit of damage across. But is he going to be ha going to have enough there to kill Flying Jew? We see the Zonias coming out, but I don't think this is going to live. We'll live at all. Flip does go down there. Carbon comes in from behind with a huge play, but he just immediately gets deleted off the rift there by Malphite and Leona. This is looking okay for uh, the Legacy boys. They've got a, a, two, a two versus two, but Tally, I mean, he's kind of unkillable at the moment with that uh, Nunu. Obviously, uh, those slows, and he's got a red buff as well, so he's just basically playing that annoying champion that no one ever wants to see. And there he's going to be a kill, finally going over to Tally. Now going to be taking a few tower shots, but he'll be okay. A delayed four for three is what we saw there. As we get to see our beautiful faces for just a second. Back to the game, though, going to keep pushing in. I mean, that's the thing. The one thing Nuno needed to do was get the auto attacks because he was so low on mana to still pick up the kills. He thought the fight was over, but Sion, not on the same page. The fight is never over. Tally, not quite. I think he might have actually hit that ult, but didn't do quite as much damage as he would have liked. Didn't get the full channel off. King is going to be under a little bit of pressure from Quakey's here. Now we can see Geeson joining the fray as well. Tally, though, he just does not care about anything, and he just keeps walking forwards, eating minions, and uh, doing that annoying ice ball thing. Forward is the only way. King is spotted by the controller. The one kill. Just trying to orb walk, trying to get as many kills as possible. Picks up one, picks up a second. Yeah, but he's going to have to get out of here. Zenster will chase him, though. The, uh, not really good angle for his Q either. So he's not going to be able to really survive off the back of that. Has oh. to flash. Really nice little ult coming out there from Choo Choo. Is this going to be enough? Yes, it does look like it is. Self ult to deny the ignite kill. And here's Carbon. Oh, look at that. Three shots, and there goes your AD carry. Would not want to be on the side of the fans at this point. Be forgiven for thing that's King Benotes Carbon. He always loved the carry junglers. Graves certainly his wheelhouse. Showing that Twitch is one as well. Leona's trying to duel, but don't think you can out duel with this Twitch. No, certainly not on support, Leona. If we learned anything from uh, the wildcards, Leona up against an AD carry is not a, a very good matchup at all. Shout out to Rusty there. Mm -hmm. Letting the world down. Couldn't make it happen on Leona. I was cheering for him, but. You would, support main. Yeah, well, you know how it is. Well, so the Legacy finally pushing one of those words we haven't used, the dirty word of today, objective. Mm. If it goes down, first one of the day, first one of the game as well. Quakey's, of course, in a bit of trouble here. The uh, ultimate coming across from Carbon, increasing his range, obviously, there. He's going to go down, though. Nice ultimate coming out from uh, Geese to lock him up under the tower. Nunu going to get a lot of damage across, but really isn't able to find any kills. The back of it, Flip now chasing down Flying Jew, and I think Jew really isn't going to be able to find a way out of this one. Oh boy, the Hook Zone is into Nautilus. Hook City is definitely established, but oh, the denial player from Choo Choo's. 
Uh, well, I mean, Keeson might have been able to take actually a tree out there. We'll have to find out as the fight continues. He's going to flash on there, gets the ignite down. This is looking like Ju in a bit of trouble. He's going to go down there to Ranger. Uh, with that ignite, but uh, a kill goes across the legacy in the meanwhile. Quad, the Choo Choo's guy, guy, he's gonna find another kill for himself. Zenstar does manage to take down the, the Nautilus on the back of things, but uh, just still fighting through, finally dies. Man, the stain damage. Actually, the burn is enough to take down one, not quite the LeBlanc. Choo Choo's turning on the style with this, uh, with this mid lane bard. I mean, maybe it's a, it's a new meta. You tell me, Papa Smith. Nope, it's not a new matter. Damn. It's just silliness, but when you have enough items, silliness can actually look deceptively strong. It does look deceptively strong at the moment. 10, 5, and 8. That's a pretty reasonable score for a bard. Thank you, Sniff. Well, I guess when, you, when you're on the side of uh, Legacy, you really have to look at carbon. 30 kills and 10 assists. A poor effort. Less than one a minute now, so it's really slowed down as carbon. Well, he's, he's been in 40 kills out of 66. I think that's quite a reasonable result for him. That's decent kill participation, but not quite the 80% we're looking for. So I don't know what to think about there. This is uh, Duo Baron. It's not even looking competitive. It's going to be an easy one. Completely slain down. Tally can basically tank it for days, getting that nom nom healing coming through with all that AP. Now Geese in a bit of trouble. Does have the back off of Zenster here. We could see Carbon getting popped. Not quite going to have the damage there, though. Does Zenster. It's going to be actually Carbon in the end going down eventually. Is so one Baron buff down, still four Baron up minions. Still talking about a lot of gold lead though. As Tally, he does have flash, he doesn't opt to go over the wall there. But <laughs> wow, nice damage coming out from that Nunu ultimate. That continues King is going to be saved for the moment there by his Zonius and also Chuchu's ultimate. Chuchu's going to come in and join the fray here. He's going to heal up Flying Ju, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Ju is going to get the Zonius across, but uh, delaying the inevitable, I would say. Flip does a bit of damage, but. We'll get it in the end. Almost pulled off an amazing dodge there. Tried to go through a magical journey, pulled off a lot of interesting space, but still goes down. Only Choo Choo's left to defend. Three meeps there for Choo Choo's going to be a lot of damage coming oh out boy. very quickly. Here we go. Yeah, you can see Geeson in a bit of trouble. Goes down to almost under half HP. There we go. Yeah. We're fighting us now. 1v2 territory. Yeah, Choo Choo's really needs to focus down Flip here. He's the main damage dealer, but not quite going to be in range. Flip just dodging out of there. Geeson will find the frag. Super delayed ace, and even with 14,000 gold, the thing to take away is the death timers are so long that you lose another team fight. You lose two of your legacy. This game could go to the fans. Yeah, well, speaking of the fans, they're going to be able to uh, pick up another dragon here. This will be the second one of the game. Whether or not Carbon comes to contest this is going to be a question, but no. He's heading over towards the Baron. Yeah, second stack, 33 minutes, probably nothing to worry there. Your legacy is definitely going to have to be team fights. Team fights the name of the day today, and that's going to be but we'll pick up this victory, but, you know, free objectives are free objectives. Certainly is, and uh, it's going to help them along the way, but really they're going to probably need a little bit more than two dragons to help them get in. Indeed. Back into this game. Obviously, Legacy well in the driver's seat. I mean, I guess if you pop the, the carbon, there isn't really a huge amount of damage left on Legacy, so there is an opportunity for the fans to come back into this game. But oh, back to attempt. Yeah, <laughs> going to be shut down completely there by Zenster, and that is just the... The typical the situation for an 80k with a uh, LeBlanc on the other team. A second ball of the curve call. You can see visually the range for this ability is massive. Ends up cancelling it early. As up, must be fighting time. Certainly is, as it always is. It's a nice little ultimate coming out there from Beast. Gets the double knockup. King did sort of manage to animation cancel that with his Spider Man, but he's going to go down in the end anyway. Flying Jew is also in a little bit of trouble here. Tally, he's trying to get that Empire. Oh off. boy! This is going to be a big one. Oh, look at that! Flip! Two-shotted by the Nunu, but uh, whether or not it's going to be uh, a good result for Guys from Legacy is the real question here. Choo Choo's going to try and get a lot of damage across to Ranga, not quite getting him. It is going to be Tally coming in for the Nunu's going to clean it up. Yeah, certainly. I mean, look at this. Just the slows for days. Geeson can't even move at the moment. He's just been stunned up by Choo Choo's and slowed there by Tally. It's just not a good situation at all for him. He goes down after a, a reasonably prolonged fight. Unfortunately, Zenster couldn't be involved in the fight. Had to fight off super minions in the base, but the inhibitors now respawn, so a bit more freedom. Looking for the deletion kills. Tally's certainly not someone you can delete, but he really wants Choo Choo. Is Zenster going to be able to take him out here? He is. There's not a whole lot of resist on Tally, so he's quite squishy when he actually does get focused. But Choo Choo's there for the backup. It's going to go for a one-for-one -one trade. Probably a reasonable result there for uh, the guys from Legacy. Yeah, Choo Choo's going to bring up the creeps. He's healing himself. Slow on mana, but he's the lone survivor as the ace comes through. Against the fans. 
Carbon's trying, his, this is what he's been doing consistently. He's not really interested in team fighting anymore. He wants to end this game as soon as possible. Yeah, just creeping around there and still seeing if he can spot out Flip at all, but wasn't really in range for that. Gonna opt to go for the inhibitor instead. Doesn't really have the damage to close it out as we see the fans coming across the defender. Now they're gonna have to rotate in towards that bot lane and clear those minions, but really it's not a good situation for them. Wherever they go, Legacy is in the other spot. Oh boy. And uh, that is another nice little hook coming out from Flying Jew. Gonna pick himself up one, actually. It was King in the end to close it out. But even so, Carbon now in a bit of trouble. Does go down. Good focus coming out from the fans onto that carry, but uh, the, the ability to deal with the following champions is really uh, what's telling at the moment for Legacy in terms of how they're going to be able to close out this game. Watching choose, cancel those autos, kite back, nice hold on to three members, buys them time, but buys them time for what? They're never really backing off. They want to always reinitiate these fights. Only Carbon is trying to backdoor them. He's going to tell them. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say no tally in the fight here, but now he's in. Get across there, a little bit of damage across the oh ultimate boy. comes out. Not quite going to be able to channel it enough. Zenster doing some good work there, picking himself up a double kill. And the King is running towards the wrong base. Bonk has almost six items. King, you're not going to find any back doors, you're not going to get away. He's like James Bond trying to infiltrate the enemy base, but he's being caught by the minions. Well, seems like a solid snake attempt for me. Last second shielding, but uh, going to go down. Metal Gear Nautilus, not really a thing you think of. Massive creature, of course, soon will be on the bottom of the ocean here mm. in Australia. My name will be on that statue. Mine will not. Bad luck. I didn't play enough games that week. Ocean Week 2015 was what that was all about. Yeah. You know, let's look it up on Riot Games' website. Obviously, we had 2016 just last week as well, uh, the Ocean Week, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, I rocked up too late for Ocean Week. I was busy the first time. Two years I was in a late row. this time, I know. Letting down the team. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. I celebrated Australia Day, but Ocean Week, that was uh, a bridge too far for me. Yeah, getting back into the game, we can see, uh, wow, look at the damage coming across to the blue buff there from Zenster, just completely popping. It. I mean, he's popping. Everyone. Noodle, he's popping everyone at this point. Good stun coming out there for Choo Choo's. He's going to save him for now, but whether or not he gets chased, it's going to be important here. Ooh, Quakey's, he's keen, but uh, he's going the wrong way at the moment. Very nice curving of the side ultimate, but does he have the backup to deal with Carbon? Carbon's got a lot of damage, a lot of tankiness. Yeah, we can see uh, he's going to survive for a reasonable amount of time, then flip. Oh, he's in trouble. This the dot is actually going to kill him there in the end as well. Zensa now being chased. Sonia's comes out, but... Oh, Ooh, really nice little play there. He's going to be able to survive off the back of that. Flying Jew now has to pop the Zonyas, and it's going to be a yeah, kill there going to Ranger. Lots of kills coming up from that Ignite there for Ranger. There's no joke on this LeBron. His yeah. mechanics have been super on point. There's only mechanics to auto-attack, clearly, as Chuchu's showing. All the Zensa in a world of hurt for the moment. Carbon's had enough. Good little jukes, but uh, the ultimate coming out from Nautilus. Can't juke that. Yeah, Carbon had enough. He decided to disconnect. Just fixing some settings, maybe having a bit of fun, but regardless. Twitch was dead during that fight. We see King just bounding down towards his nexus. He's wanted to finish the game for quite a while. They're looking to close it out now. Yeah, they're surely going to get the inhibitor off this one. And still, you can see 10 seconds on the, those respawn timers for the band. So I dare say at least one of these turrets is going down. One is already down, so this could be the end of the game. The Nexus very shortly going to be under a bit of damage. Choo Choo's is going to get the ultimate across there onto Quake. He slows things down. It looks like Legacy is going to have to fall back off, the, off this one. Well, they're going to try to fall back, which is can they? Trying to deny the magical journey. Can't quite do it. One more bullet will take down Choo Choo's. None left now, though. Yeah, King coming in for the little bit of, uh, I guess, man shielding. But uh, he's going to probably go down for his troubles. Trying to get something done here, but uh, really, um, he's found himself in a bad spot. Yep. There was uh, no way out there whatsoever. Didn't matter if he had flash, didn't matter if he had a bit more health. He was done so. Certainly done so, indeed. But who's not done so? It is Carbon. Deciding probably wisely not to go in there because obviously. Three versus one, despite being 31 kills up, is probably not a good idea. I mean, 31 kills is impressive for 39 minutes. 14 deaths, also pretty impressive. The death counts have been <laughs> surprising. I mean, King, of course, has been donating himself for science quite a lot this game with 18 deaths. But uh, Twitch certainly, I guess you have to say, pretty decent target selection for Twitch to have died that many times. But also, pretty aggressive opening after what was a 14-1 and one start for this Twitch. Yeah, well... Yeah, just waiting for Legacy to sort of regroup. You can see Tally up there coming in from the base with the home guard. And once he gets there, I dare say Legacy going to be king for the fight. Have a teleport ward. Oh, he's going to get completely 
pop. That's a really important pick actually coming out from the fans. They did use a couple of ultimates for it though. Let Leona and the Malphite. Look so. and choose damage. Just yeah. free autos down a tanky side. Of course, not tanky himself dies in the backside. This is the two big damage dealers from Legacy down. And there's the third one. Tally, I mean, he was the one that's really been, I guess, the pain for uh, the, the guys from fans side of things. And now King in a bit of trouble as well. He will go down. This is looking good for the fans. They might be able to close it off this one. And look at the death time. It's 55 seconds for King. Still 35 seconds for Carbon. It feels like he died an age ago. They are going to backdoor this turret. It's going to take a while. You can see the reload mechanic coming through from Flip. They're taking this down really slowly. And it's just on flying due to try and buy time. They do have a lot of turrets to go through. So not really going to be able to close it out just yet. A lot of turrets plus no minion wave equals... Yes. Not Definitely fun. the thing's being pulled out quite big here, but honestly, a comeback would be crazy. Speaking of coming back, pulls from Flying Drew, but I don't know if he really wanted to pull in the out. Yeah, speaking of the pulls, well, it didn't work out in the end there for Flying Drew as he goes down. That's a ninth kill there for the support Leona. And that just goes to show you how many kills have been in this game. I mean, support, some of those items are support. I don't know about the Zonias. I feel like yeah. everyone has decided to copy the Zonias style plays that King has been putting on consistently this game. Got to get that bling. Got to get that bling. Everything looks better golden. Animations, chains, everything golden. What about me? I mean, you're looking quite brazen today. I don't know if gold will be the, cri the correct word for AC today, but you know, you could try wearing some bling. I'll let you know. Oh, well, anyway, Carbon heading in towards the bot here. It's going to be Geeson under a little bit of pressure here. Tally is going to hit that ice ball, and uh, I, I was going to say, I think Geeson's going to go down, but he uses the ultimate, gets out of there okay. Scott free. Done. Oh, boy. Ooh, see you later, Tally. This uh, LeBlanc starting to really ramp up. Carbon, though, he is in a uh, dangerous position. He's so he carefully doesn't get popped by one of these ulti. Zenster looking for him, but uh, Carbon really on the ball in terms of that. He's going to get one kill there onto Jin. Now into in a bit of pressure from the, uh, the support Leona, but uh, there's no ultimate on the side of Malphite there, so it should be a pretty easy fight, you'd have to say, for Legacy. Carbon cleaning things up at the moment. He's going to be King coming in from the back. He goes down, actually. Oh. Zenster oh, gets a double amount of damage across. And uh, the cleanup there is The very Mimic good. Distortion did so much damage, only short of something like a fully stacked Magi is when we're talking about AP. There's just few items that can really amp up this LeBlanc is doing so, so much damage to the very brittle members of Legacy. Put those members down. Hard to push, so the game continues. Indeed it does, and... Uh, Flying Jew all on his lonesome. Once again, a bit of deja vu, perhaps. He has found a lot of time alone. That's probably because he has been on a different death timer, a different spawn timer yeah. to his friends. Might want to regroup this time. I feel like a five-man push could definitely end it for Legacy, but they need to play around Carbon rather than basically donating him over to the enemies at the yeah. start of each fight. Yeah, well, I mean, if they pick Zenster in any sort of situation, then I dare say they'll get close it out, because really, you'd have to say Zenster is the only thing stopping them at the moment. Picking a LeBlanc with Zonias, good luck with that. It's possible, but uh, so obviously... It's on cooldown at the moment, but not for long. Not for long. She's on cooldown as well, so five seconds for that spawn, but uh, they're yeah. going to line up pretty, pretty well. She's going to be definitely full item, probably just needs... Boots and upgrade. Elixir also, I imagine, but uh, otherwise very much on top of things. There is still a scenario where the fans can win. They're only 10,000 gold, 12,000 to be exact behind, but at 43 minutes when we're talking full builds, doesn't really mean very much. Death times are so long. Base check from LeBlanc. Yeah, last two fights have actually gone in the favor of the fans, so let's see how this one turns out. There is a lot of damage already going across to Flying Duke. A little bit onto Tally. Really nice ultimate coming out from Malphite. Gonna knock up four players from Legacy. This is looking like it could be the end. Zenster finding a double kill on the LeBlanc there. Flying Duke now in a world of hurt as well. He will go down. Flip trying to duel up against Choo Choo's. It's Flip actually to close that one out. And this is a horrible it's result. An ace. It's an ace indeed. Legacy all down and out. Are they going to be able to close it out off this? 60 seconds on those respawn timers. That's a lot. But there is still a lot of objectives to go through here. A perfect ace, but 60 seconds is actually going to be the surrender. I believe that was only academic. So our first match of the day is an upset. We actually see the fans. Look. Obviously, Legacy was toy toying with them, but you get a bit of a feel of the 2016 patch here. If you let things go long enough, death timers get crazy long. The Jin hit full build. We didn't see the AD stack, but it would have been massive. Yep. The result, a win for the fans, and who's to argue? A very backwards and forwards game. Obviously, we saw Legacy starting to get that early advantage, but Carbon, unfortunately, wasn't able to pull his teammates through that one. I mean, 14 kills and then losing. It's not the best look for Carbon. I've no. seen him build Trinity Force Rek'Sai, but they usually won those games back in the OPL spring last year. 
But guys, we have plenty more games. We're going to go to a short break and we're going to come back with more League of Legends here at the Play It Cool Legacy House Stream. I'm running away from this pain I'm trying to find a new way Where the sun's shining down on my face I'm running away You're in a toxic relationship Time to be
Welcome back to the Azus Legacy uh, House stream. We're playing it cool over here. As you can see, we've got some friends. We've got Panda Timo and uh, just Tibbers. I don't know where Annie's at. Maybe she's backstage. She got eaten by the Baron. That's awkward, but Tibbers still survives. So that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. We just had our first game already an upset. We already had the fans. Look, Legacy were definitely... They're playing on a different level to their OPL games, or maybe a little bit too casual. They were playing it cool, I have to say. Oh, very cool. Uh, plenty of style points there. But guys, before we get into our next game, which of course will be the fans picking the champions. So, I mean, Legacy didn't need the fans to pick them some creative stuff. Who even knows what will happen when we get into that. But before then, we do have an interview as Jenna is holding on with Carbon. Thank you, boys. Forecast Jenna Baby right here with Tim, also known as Carbon who plays at Jungle for Team Legacy. Now, Kevin, I was watching the Legacy game versus Italians about two nights ago, and I saw that you were totally dominating in the jungle for the two games. So tell us, what is up with the new and improved Carbonator? Um, look, the gaming house has been pretty big for me. Uh, I've always known, been known as a LAN player. I play a lot better live than I do from home. Um, and being here kind of lets me uh, emulate that environment all the time. So it's been, it's been really big for me, yeah. So it's really transformed from legacy to legacy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no more legacy. <laughs> All right. So being the team captain of legacy, your passion for the game really shines on screen. So your fans want to know what you're like off screen. So tell us, who does the shot calling for chores in the gaming house? Um, there's not really much shot calling for chores. I just kind of do them all uh, <laughs> without saying much. Now, nah, look, it's, uh, it's not as bad as you might think. You know, everyone does their little bit. Um, I definitely do that a little bit extra, but, uh, you know, that's just part of being a leader, I suppose. Yeah, not whinging or anything. No, no, I would never do that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So currently with Legacy being 3-0 on the current split, so that means you're the undisputed champion right now, right? Do you find that, do you think that Legacy will get into the finals easily or do you think there'll be challenges along the way? I mean, there are always challenges and, uh, you know, I'm not about to say that we're the best or anything. Um, we kind of just take it game by game. Uh, I'm, I'm not thinking about the finals yet, really. I'm just thinking about uh, next game, which is on Monday. Um, but yeah, look, I'm, I'm pretty confident at the moment going forward. So play by ear. Yeah, we'll play by ear. <laughs> play it cool. Play it cool. <laughs> so with my last question, so over the years, you and the boys have injected so much passion and effort and time into making Legacy the team that it is today. Um, like with a lot of it comes with your leadership, and with your goals and direction for the team. So what do you think is Legacy's direction over the next two to three years? Um, well, for me personally, I'd like this year to be a success, obviously. But uh, what I mean by success is I, I really want this to be a sustainable model. You know, I want, I want to be able to have a house next year and the year after. And, you know, I want to be able to have a house even if I'm not playing mm. and, and I can have a house for the team. Um, so, yeah, the next two, three years, uh, hopefully it's just um, kind of solidifying where we are now. You hear it, boys? Team Legacy doesn't want to be homeless. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. Thank you so much for your time. We hope you have a good day today. Go be watching the space. Thanks for that interview, Jenna. And battling to not be homeless, I think that's maybe an overstatement, but battling for solidifying. That seems to be the big story there is that Legacy, clearly they're one of the favorites for this season, especially with the Chiefs losing their mid laner, their mm. star mid laner, Swiffer. And look, they've been performing so far, but solidifying both the gaming house concept, you know, justifying just that big change that everyone's had to shift, put their lives on hold wherever they were at, to sh move over here to Sydney to really double down on the season. And after a 2015 season where they had peaks and values and the legacy didn't pick up a win in either of the splits, of course, they both went to the Chiefs. Mm. This seems to be all about solidifying their spot as a top two team and, you know, if all things work out as the champions. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Carbon touched on a really good point that it sort of changes his perspective on the game um, when he's playing here in the house and, and that sort of thing. So I think it's really good to see these guys. And obviously we were here yesterday hanging out a little bit and, and the, the, the environment in the house actually seems really good. The guys are getting along very well and that sort of thing. So very good early signs here for, for the gaming house, at least for Legacy. And I think the big thing is that this is not just five people in a gaming house, right? This is a team that's been together for a long time. Of course, they have new members, but yeah, yeah. specifically the, the spine, we're talking about the likes of Tally, of course, has gone through his role swaps, but has been around for a long time with this organization. Mm. And specifically, Choo Choo's and Carbon. These guys have been standbys of the Oceanic scene for so, so long now. Mid and jungle, two mm. big carry roles, specifically when we're talking about Carbon. This guy, the carry jungler. A year ago, when carry jungles out of meta, 
without fail, Rek'Sai, Trinity Force, try and carry from the jungle. And look, maybe that was taking our positions lightly, or maybe that was just what he needed to be. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, though, we find the jungle meta changing. Graves is in the jungle, Kindred's in the jungle. Damage from the jungle is a viable thing. And the meta's looking to suit them. The gaming house, we only can speculate, but looks to be at least with the first month of uh, scrims behind them, successful from what I'm hearing. They're doing super, super well, but... Guys, we're almost ready to load into our next game. We already saw quite the highlights in the Legacy vs. the Fans. Still going to be Legacy vs. the Fans, but of course that little difference. This time the Fans are going to choose the champions. And mm. when we get into this game, look, we saw Bard middle. We saw no AD carry. It was actually the Nautilus AD carry, you'd have to say, or the Nautilus bottom lane from King. It was more of an AP carry, really. That's true. He was building AP, so... It wasn't really much consistent damage. Not really right. any of the things that an AD champion is known for, mm. but... They went for it anyway, and they lost that game, so yep. who knows what to take from that. So the fans are choosing champions. And look, fans are prone, I would say, to picking certain champions that are never seen in the meta. Mm. First one springs to mind, Heimerdinger, another champion, Teemo. You never see, at least in a competitive level. Are there any slept-on champions that you really want to see the fans maybe bring back that we just haven't seen in the meta in the last few months? I know you've only been watching from afar, but there's some champions it feels like that just never see play. Well, I mean, the first two that came to mind was Poppy and Gangplank, but obviously... Oh boy. Well, things have changed. Let me tell yeah. you about Poppy and yeah. Gangplank. They're so, kind of a big deal. You know, now. like whenever someone asks you that question, they, those are the two that I would that I would always fall back on, but um, unfortunately not there. Anyway, saved by the champion select. So these are our picks. Not too bad there. Actually, oh, so the teams are all mixed up. Tally's here and Minky. Okay, I see what's going on. Yeah, so we're going with a blind pick start here. We're going to see some more fans than we might have expected, but the result here is that we've got some uh, some fun going on. So the one thing we can say, the jungle matchup is going to be our featured matchup. That's the legacy stars coming against each other. Two people, no junglers there though, however, as it's going to be Tally with Smite. Now, there is and also Ezreal. a Smite on the Wukong. Yeah. So we're going to have to wait and see how that all shakes out. Maybe it'll be a jungle Ezreal. Maybe it'll just maybe be a mid lane Ezreal with Smite. Of course, this was once a thing Maybe when you could just AoE down lanes. I'm not really sure what mm. to expect. Their tally really does. Blue build Ezreal with blue Smite. Uh, it, it could <laughs> be a thing. Look, tally does much the tally beat of does his own what drum tally sometimes, does. right? Exactly. Tally yeah. does what tally does. We try not to question him. Minky Dinky, of course, Minky Whale on the least center. That looks a bit more straightforward, but only when I see the item build can I be sure that we're going to see the Warriors and the uh, the 80 items because, I mean, hybrid Lee Sin, maybe that's going to be a thing. What about full AP Lee Sin? Full AP Lee Sin. See that? So basically a full support. I mean, I know you're very support-minded. The only AP scaling is on the shield, so yeah. I guess you could, with that 0.5 ratio, you got 1,000 AP. He's got AP. some slows. He's got some utilities there. They don't actually scale with the AP. Yeah, though. I know, but I mean, he's still got the... The utilities. And look, this is me talking. Lich Bane, Nashless Tooth, make it happen. Of course, do it. I mean, you have to worry about energy then. It's not actually the best to build cooldown reduction on Lee Sin, but I shouldn't be a naysay. I'd love to see the AP Lee Sin. I just want to know where the hell this Ezreal is going because it is certainly not clear from Champ Select. Let's think about what we have here. Exhaust Morgana, probably support. support. Lucian's probably going to be AD carry. Top lane Renekton. I mean, the only one that really makes sense is that mid. one of Wukong and Ezreal is going mid, and it could be either. Well, yeah, it could be. I mean, traditionally, you'd probably say Ezreal would go in towards mid there, Look, Ezreal jungle has always kind of been a fringe thing. And honestly, Wukong jungle, despite the fact that it kind of makes more sense, you know, tanky AD damage, mm. you'd expect the Wukong to go jungle. But this is Tally we're talking about. This is Ezreal. Mm. No guarantees either way. I mean, I guess we're just going to have to play wait and see. I mean, something that I guess we've already spoken about last game is that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing coming out today is, is sort of uh, fringe picks and that sort of thing. Fringe so, picks, sure. So we're playing a wait and see game until we get into the game before we can really call it. I mean, anything. Bard mid is not a fringe pick. That's just that's just a little bit silly. And he played the ultimate punishment of losing to the fans. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they surrendered, so I guess not the most demoralizing way, but still were overpowered by the fans, perhaps for... Maybe that'll be a recurring story today. If you take people too lightly with these death timers, who's to say? But we are loading onto the rift, mm -hmm. waiting to see just where that Ezreal and that Wukong end up. Yes. Let's have a look at his buy. Doran's ring first, so it could be an AP Ezreal mid. Looking more like it when we see a machete come through for the Wukong. Probably going to be jungle Wukong. So Tally, it's bringing back the Smite. Now, Smite was only a thing on mid lane Ezreal because Ezreal's only weakness in the laning phase is pushing the lane. He can't do yep. that without his ultimate. That was when you could just AoE down a wave. That's no longer a possibility. So the next question is, 
Is it going to be Runic Echo? With that Doran's Ring, certainly suggesting that it's going to be mm. Runic Echo, which is going to be nice poke. I'm not 100% sure how that interaction works, just because we haven't seen the resurgence of Smite as your mid, thank goodness, <laughs> just yet. So we'll have to keep a track and see just how effective that is in the middle. I mean, it's an interesting matchup there between Lissandra and Ezreal as well. Both a lot of mobility champion sort Minions of oriented. Well, I mean, without Cleanse, you know, because he's forced to take Smite, there is actually quite a lot of kill pressure, specifically when Minky Dinky makes his way to the mid lane. So, mm. waiting for a status report, Ezreal's probably going to have to play pretty safe. Otherwise, Alessandra can definitely come and catch them. Alrighty, so, obviously going to see these junglers both starting at their, their usual spots. Minky really not shaking the better up too much. Get a little bit of assistance from the top lane as well, of course. Well, we have some excitement also off screen here as it turns out that uh, the Twitch chat, of course, we talked about how they can involve in prizes. Another fun thing is that, guys, next match will be Legacy versus the fans. So that part's normal. However, champs will be chosen by the Twitch chat. So suddenly, the Cap responsibility. Captain Mode Champion, Pop Champ, kind of on the edge of the meta. Whatever you guys choose, so I imagine we'll have some of our staff there to help coordinate this all. But whatever you guys want to see from Legacy to back up what we're seeing in this game, back up the bar medal we saw last game, get in the Twitch chat and let us know what you want to see from Team Legacy. Because, man, we got some crazy fireworks. That's, of course, for the next game. And for now, we'll reframe. You see Renekton and Riven, such an older matchup in the top yeah. lane, dueling up, and this is uh, decidedly more meta than perhaps some of the other craziness going on in this match. Yeah, very high damage matchup coming up here in the top lane. The, the advantage at the moment going to Riven, you can see the flash already burnt, therefore insane logistics on Renekton, so he's going to have to play pretty safely. He's very low on HP, does get the healer, but uh, I dare say he's going to be in trouble, and he goes down first, blood goes to the Riven. Skill matchup, and Alderic, Alderic. Starts off with the skill. Speaking of skill, Tally smites away that cannon. No last hitting required with that smite. But already the skill matchup starting to tilt towards the Riven. And we've all played solo queue. The moment that you see Riven pick up first blood, you groan a little bit. You're like, oh boy, yeah. this could be a rough one. Well, it does seem like uh, the blue side having a little bit of trouble here as well. Getting pushed into their tower just a bit. Obviously opens up a, a pretty easy gank here. So we have an important question. Okay. Shaun of the Dead. Thoughts? Seen it? Well, you must have yes, seen I have seen Shaun of the Dead. Big fan. Where do you, where do you rate it in the uh, trilogy of Pop Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, and the, the, la the later one? I don't know what the later one is, but... Mm. The sci-fi one? Probably. World's End, I believe. That oh. sounds right. Did I see that? In I don't remember if I've seen that one. But I think I, I think I go Shaun of the Dead number one. Obviously. Shaun of the Dead, definitely a modern classic. Definitely. If you disagree, get in the Twitch chat and talk about the next game, I guess. Don't talk about Shaun of the Dead. I can't handle it. But, uh, yep, just early game. Surprisingly passive. Remember, we Whoa. came off a game where we kill still a plenty. Yeah, Minky successfully taking away that uh, big Raptor there, but it takes a lot of damage for it as well, so not sure if that was worth. He's going to have to probably recall off that. Could have seen a trade of flashes there. Situation where an auto attack and I believe a mystic shot would have been enough to take down the Lee Sin. I think he had his flash up himself. Insane logistics able to push in the lane. Remember, surprisingly, hasn't been denied, but it's already that got a phase. phase. Yeah. Do worry about the phase versus the orange shield. That's a big, big lead in items. And also just the ability to auto attack. And as you can see on the screen here, the rage passer, that extra movement speed specifically for melee champions means that the trading. And the trading options should be squarely in the advantage of Riven. Yeah, she's also got a level up as well, so... Some logistics does need to be careful here. Aladoric very close to probably hitting a, a second kill for himself. Does a lot of damage there. Obviously no flash available here for the Renekton as well. And very close to level 6 for the Renekton as well. See Wukong not able to quite kill off this Lissandra, but Lissandra's been on the back foot in a lane you'd expect her to dominate. The big thing about Lissandra versus Ezreal in any fashion, is that Lissandra is, of course, one of the best wave clearers in the game. Push that wave into Ezreal. Not really much way for Ezreal to run the lane at all, so that's why you're seeing extra jungle attention. It's not just that he's got that superstar in the mid lane in Tally, it's that this is a matchup that's very difficult for Ezreal to get a foothold. So expect plenty of attention from Wukong to get Ezreal through those really nasty early levels. Yeah, well, at the moment, the attention from Wukong is up there in the top lane, which is probably not a terrible idea. He maybe needs to pay some attention to his creeps. He's uh, still level 3. That's a problem. He's making dinkies on another counter-jungling mission. 
Yeah, he's going to spot that out, but really not a whole lot that uh, this, this bot lane here can do um, to stop that counter jungling. So, Minky getting away with another creep from the, uh, the opposing jungle. Alidoroth, though, he's pretty low. He's going to hit the number six, though. This is the go signal. It is going to be a lot of damage coming out, and really no response at all there from Renekton. But watch out, here comes a pace. Is he going to be able to do this? This is actually a very dangerous situation. Obviously, Riven, level six. Only level 4 for Wukong. There's a lot of burst potential on Riven if she decides to turn it around. Looks like she's keen to just get out of there. And she will manage to find her, her way away. Halidoric actually played that really smart. Went into the war, it went into the brush, but crucially there was no ward available. Speaking of ward, the ward jump release in is going to be quickly. Oh, maybe yeah. too. Yeah, Stereo in a bit of trouble. No ultimate available just yet for Minky, but he will be able to close it out there with a sonic wave. And beneath now, he's in trouble. He's going to go down here. Well, are they going to give it to Minky? Double kill for him. Good start there. Nice to always get that little early advantage on your Lee Sin jungle. And nice to pass over the kills to the carry. And when Minky was in the game, he's always the anointed carry. Whether it was top lane, whether it was mid lane, way back in the day. Again, we're aging ourselves talking about Dragus. Minky mid lane. But uh, that Gragas clip. Mm. Guys, if you uh, want to so open up a second browser, look up uh, Minky Whale Gragas. Mm. Uh, infamous for... Just an amazing play. That's about all I can say about it. I won't spoil how it went, but it was uh, decidedly Minky Whale. It was. That's about all you can say. <laughs> oh, well. Good old, good old times. Anyway, in the mid lane, we can see, obviously, Calamat here just pushing this wave in. It's going to be tough for Ezreal to clear that wave that we spoke about a little bit before. He is level 6, no ultimate available in the top lane. Another trade going across. A lot of fury there. For Renekton, but really he's going to have to get out of there because level 5 up against level 7 is never going to be a good situation when you're uh, insane logistics here. He has managed to hit level 6, pops the ulti immediately, but really it's not going to help him. I, I would have to say Ruin is still very well in advantage here. Now I kind of understand what he was going for though. The one thing that people kind of sleep on with Renekton ultimate is that you want to pop it earlier rather than later. Specifically, if you see someone about to face check a busher in, ult before they get in, just because it's all about that consistent dot damage. It's basically about having the Sunfire Cape-esque aura early and of course having that extra health. Mm. But the Riven has the phase. The Riven was always going to disengage. The trade was never going to look good. This trade's decent though, but Riven, she's not done. Yeah, a little bit of a misposition there coming out from Renekton. He's not too far and that is going to allow Riven to get that damage across. And of course you can see the gank coming in from Kalamat. A really nice little bit of teamwork coming yeah, out. Riven. Riven. Renekton actually flashed awkwardly into range of the Ring of Frost, was taken down. Riven didn't quite have all, didn't even need to pop it in the end, can actually push the minions up then back. Everything looking great for Aladoric in the top lane. Yeah, looking good down in the bot lane for his team as well. Little Red and Shaun of the Dead have got a level advantage. Well, I haven't really been right. able to... Yeah. Little Red and Shaun of the Dead. I haven't been I able like to push it. that though, so... That's still, if this is a future duo in the, uh, in the makings, I like it. Shaun of the Little Red. No, I think it's Little Red and Shaun of the Dead. Right, yeah. that's good. Shaun of the Dead moving up a little bit quickly. He's level 6 though, so even if bound, we'll have some oh, counterplay. Teleport. teleport coming in. This is not looking good at all for Winnie. Does he have a flash available? Well, yes, but it's not really going to matter because the Riven, all that damage. Had to change target. There's no flash available on Lucian. Don't know if that was communicated. I feel like it was a potential chase down because the minion wave was coming. It was a situation where you could just auto the oncoming minion lane, get the extra movement speed and be able to close down. Riven's going for a walk. She's walking back to top. If she can take Tally with her, she'll feel pretty good. Yeah, his cooldown is on for his essence flux. So he's going to probably help. Finally gets an arcane auto shift, actually, is the one I'm looking for. Boom! But in the end, as you say, goes down. Boom. Boom goes the uh, auto attack, not really a headshot necessarily. No Caitlyn in this game, no Boom headshot, but uh, maybe we'll see attack speed Caitlyn later and marvel at Boom headshot. I'm more of a headshot. fan of attack speed Vayne, Machine Gun Vayne. Machine Gun Vayne, back on the release of the 2016 patch when you could stack uh, well, Static Shiv and Rapid Fire Cannon. That was actually very legit. It was uh, Rapid Fire Cannon into Static Shiv, into Infinity Edge, 80% crit, people just died to your auto attacks. Speaking of dying, we spoke about the Rift Herald once last game, but no. I think he's trying to solo, but having quite the time. Yeah, it can get a little bit of back on him. Oh, Doric, and this is probably an easy one for them. No one really dares to contest it before the red side. He's picked up the buff. Mickey. That's interesting. It's one of those situations where, on paper, it's a, it's a laner's buff, because you think about it, you conceptualize it in terms of the iconic Baron-esque minions, right? But the yeah. minion buff is actually quite deceptively small. You don't get any extra tankiness on the minions, only 10% or a small percentage of attack speed. So even though it slightly helps you push faster, actually giving the damage and movement speed to your jungler to both pull off more 
devastating ganks and be in position to pull them off is actually on balance seems to be stronger than giving it to a mid to a laner. Alright, I've just noticed something very interesting. Let's have a look at Mickey Whale's build here. Okay. What are your thoughts? Well, it's you like swiftness. It's, it's some movement speed. Swiftness boots, I think, as a jungler rushing that before combat stats is fine, but each type of she uh, of sorry, of the steel item we're gonna see is Aldoric gonna take an extra turret shot. Dies to the turret, too aggressive on this Renekton. Renekton with a chain vest, actually turning it around on most of a back cleaver, and of course a level advantage for the Riven. Nice play, but probably too aggressive from the Riven. Yeah, I mean the intent was there and it was good, but uh, obviously you've got to be able to uh, convert these things, and in that situation wasn't quite there. Still, 3-1 advantage in the top lane, and I mean, giving one kill to Renekton at this stage of the game is, is probably not going to be the worst situation. I mean, he, he does really rely on that early game, and now we are starting to head in towards the, the mid lane a little bit more. The rarely seen crit animation from Lee Sin in full effect here, as uh, we mentioned before, the Shiv item. I'm thinking it's going to be Rapid Fire Can just for extra auto attack range, but it could be Shiv. I don't even fancy moves. Oh, yeah, he's going to get a bit of damage across to Lucy in there. Really nice play. Holding off on that Q, but perhaps going to be his undoing as he does get taken out. A lot of damage. Managed to W over the wall, I think it was. Maybe a oh. flash. Double kill there for Tallywhack. A nice ultimate coming out. And he's going to fight a triple there as well onto ooh, the Minky Whale. Can he chase down and get a quarter hit? Probably not. Kalamat should get out of here okay. Actually, Wukong taking well. a lot of damage. Does get the turnaround kill, but still, this is going to signal an easy dragon here for the red team, and perhaps that's their opening back into this game. The scary thing, 17 CS advantage at bottom off. It's going to be another kill. Passing over a casual four kills to what is now confirmed to be the runic Echo Ezreal. At the CS advantage, so many kills out of nowhere. Instant double kill with the ultimate. And now we're going to see what a fed mid lane Ezreal with runic Echo can put together. I was a big fan of uh, AP Ezreal back in the day. So. When, are we talking back in the day, back in the day, or are we talking about Rune Glaive? No, no, like way before Rune Glaive. So pre Smite? Yeah. I think Smite made it consistent. Um, that was a terror to be in. The item was literally changed to stop that particular edge case in general of the Rune Glaive. But Ezreal can't back just yet, but you have to imagine it's sitting on quite the bit of gold. Yeah, it certainly should be. Let's have a look. 1700, that's a reasonable amount. Well, he literally freshly shopped and got a quad so. Yeah. What happens? You uh, pile on some gold. Level 10 now, 2,000 gold casually. What will be the next pickup? I mean, to me, of course, the thing about Runeglaive was you didn't need to pick up Lich Bane. You effectively got a Lich Bane. Now, yeah. Luke's Echo, you don't really pick it up, but That's you don't have that Lich Bane, so it will probably be the Lich Bane. Yeah. You have confirmed with the items, so basically a reverse of the old item build just because that AP jungle item has just changed face with the uh, introduction of Runic Echo. Yeah, a little bit interesting to see how this build is going to come out here for Tally, but uh, I mean, it's certainly shaping up well. He's already got those four kills, uh, and he is going to have to be the major carry in this game. Has to go up against that 3-1 on the, the uh, Riven, who, by the way, has already finished her Black Cleaver. It's only 14 minutes, so she's doing a pretty good job. Big thing about Ezreal, though, is with Flash and potentially a QSS later in the game, you can open up distance from the mm. Riven, and we're talking about Burst. AP Ezreal is all about the ult landing for casually 1,500 damage. That's what I used to like about it. I mean, sitting in a bush, waiting for someone to face check, channeling your ult as they're walking into the bush, and then just slamming it. No, oh, it's certainly a possibility. Is that two-level advantage on top hasn't ended? This is just auto attacking. Able to blow the next knot without ulting. Ult herself. Ooh, and, oh, able to build enough space. Doesn't have flashes. We missed it off map. Another kill for the Ezreal. Yeah, the, the room is chasing though. Anyway, we're going to move down to the bot lane. Meanwhile, we does manage to close out that kill, but in the bot lane, it is, I guess, the the story of the moment. See a kill going over to Kalamat there, but uh, oh, a little red rather. Nice binding though. Red falls super low. We'll get away. It was just a yeah. retreating binding from beneath. Good little shield coming out there from uh, the, the uh, blue. Maybe we'll see some lane assignment changes. I don't know if I like Riven in a long lane against Ezreal. I mentioned it before no. with the arcane shift with the flash now available again. Very, very hard to close the distance on this Ezreal. I mean, Riven is probably an okay matchup into Ezreal, which you can get in there early, but when you've got the 5-1 on the Ezreal already, and the double buff, there's pretty much almost no chance we're going to be able to do anything there. So just clipped Riven with the ult, casually took off already 5 600 health, so really punishing double buffs as well. Oh. Look at that damage, just from the Essence Flux. Yeah, a lot of damage. 
Not looking too good here for the guys on the, the blue team if they keep Tally going like this. But having said that, they will be able to get a turret off this. Looks like Calamat should be able to get this one. Comes to return, doesn't hit a skill shot. There goes the turret like you mentioned. And maybe you can play around the edge. Well, that's the hope here if you're the blue team. Oh boy, face check now. Yeah, level 8 Wukong though, he's not very tanky at all either. Calamat perhaps could have actually just gone in there really. I have to say, but does manage to get out. Choosing the safer option. Didn't have the ultimate ultimate available, so I guess that's a reasonable choice. Static Shiv is the pickup from Lee Sin. So you have to say on balance, Ezreal building, you know, maybe some a way that shouldn't survive this lane, but now has survived landing phase. And Lee Sin going a bit creative with the build. Gonna be a very squishy but very fast Lee Sin. So maybe the insect mechanics will be impressive because he's gonna have to really make the engages work with this build. Yeah, he certainly is, but uh, at the moment, it's, it's going okay. Oh, well, I say it's going okay, but he did get that double kill early. He's since picked up two deaths, so perhaps not all is well in uh, Paradise, or in trouble in Paradise. You know who's not been in Paradise? This Renekton. Then. No. Uh, well. I feel like this is an ill-fated drive, but they are sort of transferring that uh, aggro from the turret pretty well. See whether or not they're going to fully commit the just insane logistics just hanging around. I think they're waiting for that ulti to fall off a little bit. There it goes. Now they're going to go for the engage. Mickey gets a lot of damage across, but the kill goes across to Aladoric. And another one there on the ribbon. There's no one there to relieve pressure. So even though, as you mentioned, the first execution, not the best, we're able to back away is face check number three of Wukong onto Lissandra. First one, Wukong got exploded. Second one, not about two. even. Third one. Not quite. Hmm. Here comes Tally, got a lot of gold. Lich being completed already, only missing the boots. We'll have a bit of movement speed nonetheless. Red team's been he is going to be a terror once he starts to hit those uh, move movement items. Obviously, Ezreal, one of the more difficult champions to catch, but um, if he, if he does get caught out. He's still pretty squishy, so he has to position well. Veteran shot calling for Minky. This is a guy who's led his team previously. He's not on the lineup as a starter anymore, but a great shot call. There's the mining. Whoa. Oh my oh. god, the damage from Ezreal. Really good work coming out there from Tally. He's going to help Let's his bot lane. Stereo mine managing to find himself his first kill of this game. A lot of noise going on in the background as well. Aladoric, he's going to get in on top of Tally. He's going to be able to close out this kill. He gets the shield up, wow. and he does get it there. Minky Well coming in for the backup. They do need to get out of here very quickly, though. Minky Well goes down to Wukong. Insane Logistics now chasing Aladoric. But Aladoric will be able to get out of that one okay. And I guess that's the important thing because he is the one that's on the kill streak. Aladoric is no joke on this rim. And Miner comes through. Probably too healthy though. You have to be careful with Stereo. It's a really important black shield. They open up some space and now suddenly the in trouble. That was a little interesting, that flash coming forward from uh, Kalamat trying to get a bit of damage across to Stereo. It's going to possibly be his undoing here. And, uh, there is the dive. That's but not going to drop back. Yeah, it's a one for one. For one, maybe generous to Lissandra, but does pick up the kill. Some really nice mechanics, specifically Beneath has been a sniper mm. on these bindings. You'd know snipers better than me. No AWPs, but AWP. still very impressive nonetheless. There's mm. insane logistics. Look, he built full tank. You see some Renekton's fall behind in lane against the likes of Riven, then still go for that tier mat, still look for, say, the Titanic Hydra, but went full tank and it's helped him more often than it's harmed him. Okay, he's behind the CS, but he's still at least able to enter lane, even if the result is often things like this, where the all-ins just, he really has no option except to dash away. Yeah, well, look, I mean, the thing for the red team here is that they do need that sort of front lane. Obviously, you can see Tallywag, he's there on five kills. They've already got that damage. There's no need here for Renekton to actually go for that damage. Um, so I'd have to say, yeah, building, building the tank is obviously a, a much better choice in this situation. In the late game, Tallywag is going to be very much like the blue Ezreals that dominate the meta right now, but in terms of just being really focused on hitting those mystic shots. That's what, that's trying what to steal some CS. the minion wave, absolutely. Just pushing out the lane, doing a favor. Don't oh, worry yeah. about it. But uh, still going to be putting out a lot of more damage than the blue as well, at least in a burst sense. Well, I and beneath coming in just at the right time. Stereo looked like he was almost going to get engaged upon, but uh, that second player forcing off the bot lane for the blue team. Backing away this time is Lissandra trying to make picks, trying to make map pressure. Remember, Ezra cannot apply that. If he ever uses that ult for anything other than pushing his wave, Lissandra will push in and he'll have minions to deal with. He already lost his outer turret. And that might be coming as well as, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, really nice predictive stun there coming out from Aladoric. Is he going to be able to close this one out? There's a lot of damage actually going across to him. He's already used the, the ult, but there you go. There's the second uh, button press, I guess you could say. 
enough. If he didn't get enough done either. Yeah, certainly not. Stereo gonna take a lot of damage. He's gonna go down to this Tristana. Why? Let's go down to the, the Sandra in the back lines. Kalamat up in here to help, uh, help out Alador. He needs to get out of here. He's on that kill streak, so they really don't want to give that up. But unfortunately for them, it's going to go over to Tally as well. A huge amount of gold. He does go down in the end there to uh, Minky, but this trade's going across everywhere. A pace has to really fall back here. Kalamat should be able to close this one out, but uh, we'll see what happens. Pace going to go back in. Oh, he's got the damage. He does. Wow. Wow, what a turnaround. The 20% reduced damage was enough to allow him to just win the trade. The actual sub-story of this game has been Wukong versus Lissandra. How many times have they found each other yeah. on the road? It's been consistently Lissandra who's been getting ahead, but this time, by the merest of margins, finally, some peace for the Wukong. Finally, and he is going to be able to recall back there, picks himself up a couple of items. Dragon being pinged by the red team here, so... Possibly a, a uh, an objective early, I guess you could say, in terms of the uh, the day. I mean, there's so been rift, there's been rift heralds. Yeah, there's been one dragon as well. Well, you know, the narrative from casters like myself has been deprioritize re deprioritization of dragon, oh, yeah. and of course, this is the bloodthirsty game. Do you want to get those highlight reel kills yeah. to show your friends, put them on YouTube later? So I can understand the dragons not being picked up. Yeah, but is not the first dragon the most important? Oh, well, aside from the fifth. I, I agree. The, the common a common thought is first dragon for the stats specifically as you scale on and yeah. then basically until we get to say the fifth it's about denying the first dragon from the enemy just because six percent like the game goes six percent of a lot, is a lot yeah exactly so this could be uh, i guess uh, another d denial i guess i'd say they've already picked up that first dragon so well finally gonna be six percent guess who loves six percent more that's of course tally he's already got a mountain of ap they haven't got it yet they do secure it's actually the double spike not that hard as well that's some ap ezra damage right here oh good zonya's coming out there burns two ultimates from uh, the guys from the red team but really at the end of the day it doesn't matter we'll be able to take him down in the end Get him down fight's not over tally's coming in he is keen gets a lot of damage across the shawn of the dead not quite sure he'll be able to finish that one off not really Having that uh, mobility just yet to be able to chase one down a Lulu. round of spells, casually doing 70% of the health. Mm. Of the Lulu. That's a Lulu with Aegis. If there was no magic resist whatsoever, that was probably a dead Lulu from a single rotation, not including hold from Tally. Yeah, another nice little bit of uh, counter jungling coming out from Minky. Gotta say, he's been all over that red side jungle beneath. Looks like he wants to tower dive, but he's still fall back there. As oh, Doric. Playing it safe. No, it's not playing it safe, it's Minky. Because he started off with Static Shiv, and now he's going for Infinity Edge. So, Crit Lee Sin is certainly going to be a thing. He wants to just delete oh. this Ezreal, but uh, he's going to find deletion himself. Looking for the snipe, doesn't get it. Yeah, I think he's probably going to go down here in the end anyway. Aladoric doing a lot of work, meanwhile, in mid lane. Um, Stereo goes down. That's the second kill there for Aladoric. Gets the ultimate from Lulu as well. Tallywacker going down. This is looking pretty huge for the blue team. Pace does manage to finally come back in, takes down Alador, but uh, you'd have to say in that situation a win for the blue team. In competitive play, we've been seeing a lot of Fiora Lulu synergy, but the Riven Lulu, especially with the Riven this fed, already has the Black Cleaver, so has a lot of movement speed, but Whimsy and Ult, suddenly the Riven was doing the same sort of consistent damage, picked up some good kills. This game is balanced on a knife, knife set. Two and a half thousand gold isn't a massive lead, but some structures would really help out the blue team. Yeah, they certainly would. They're doing their best to get this one down, but uh, I have to say, red team probably looks like they'll be able to hold out on this one. Yeah, they have some waves that are available, so just, you can see Wukong doesn't want to initiate, doesn't have his ult, but he's just looking to buy time for the respawns, crucially for the time for the Ezra. Remember, Ezra Ooh. could be involved in this fight with a long-range snipe from base. So very close to being a nice little blinding coming up from beneath there on Morgana, but wasn't to be. Lulu avoids it and probably survived because of that. Already, downtown Ezreal ults doing a lot. They're only going to get bigger. 6% stats, plus, of course, the 25% from Death Cap. 30, but in my head is 25% from regardless. Percentage AP scaling coming from that Death Cap. Everything scales with everything. You see an AP ratio on the Lich Bane. The Rooting Echo also has an AP ratio. So, damage output. Those rotations that were doing 70% of health suddenly jumping to 90, closer to 100. Scary spot. And only really Void Staff away from a full build Ezreal at 25 minutes. 
a very scary thought. But having said that, they do have the ability to shut him down. Obviously, we've seen Mighty hits. Growth doing a pretty good job. But in this situation, really not going to have too much success. Wild Growth comes out from Lulu. Not enough to save him. And now, this is a commitment from the blue team, which oh, perhaps boy. shouldn't have been taken. As we see a triple kill going over to the red team. Two for Lucian. And the one for Tallywacker there. I mean, Lucian got the kill, Kratos, but it was all Ezreon. He got away with the aggressive Arcane Shift, and only because Beneath was on point with the early Black Shield. Not done still. Looking for more kill. Yeah, Kalamat in trouble here. He's going to do a bit of damage across the tally, but not going to be enough there. Lucian now starting to get pretty strong as well. Five kills for him. A pace getting the ultimate across there as well. Cyclone doing a lot of damage. And uh, the red team now looking to pick up this objective. Looking to push forward. See the price that you pay when you go full damage on Lucian. Mickey looking for some fun, but dies with both summoners and ult available. Because one rotation from multiple champs here, and he's dead. Probably not a, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. The rhyming bot lane in there trying to do what they can, but this inhibitor is going down for sure. Really does have. Oh, crucial. So Rip is going to have to be. A little bit scared. Still looks aggressive. Wants to stop the inhibitor going down, but no way to do that. Yeah, it does get a pretty decent ultimate across. I think it was three players there. Does a lot of damage, but really wasn't enough in the end there. There's no follow off either, so. Red team gonna get out of there scot free. They got an inhibitor. Very pretty to be able to close this one out. Yep, they're in a wonderful spot. The big thing about this Ezreal is there was no doubting that you put these items together. It's powerful in the late game, but it's all about denying them in the laning phase. So far, so good at the start. You saw Lissandra getting a lot of damage onto the turret, yeah. but that triple into a quadra was just the big tipping point here, as the yep. Ezreal that was farming decently suddenly had decent farm, and then a whole boatload of kills. we got to remember that the blue team was 7-0 up in terms of kills, so the red team come back. That's quite a cheap Nothing wrong with a comeback. Speaking of comebacks, we're going for the Desperation Baron. So far, Renekton not in a position, and not respected here. Morgana hasn't got close. Down to 3,000 health. This should be uncast about all of the steel potential. Oh, not quite there. Mickey well oh. off point with the, uh, the smite. That was a no look steal. He's not done. He has flash available. Yeah, Mickey well missing the Q critically there. Tell him he's going to be able to get out there alive. And no kills exchanged at all. CRS tally intel. Just can't pick it up. Still not over the fact that he doesn't have a legacy tag. But uh, next level trolling for tally. Tally is that this Tally does. On full display this game at 9, 4, and 10. Balance has certainly been good compared to Minky, who's got that negative KDA going, and uh, we just have yet to be convinced by the deletion damage from this Infinity Edge uh, Lee Sin. Well, I'm just waiting for him to hit a nice little Sonic Wave onto uh, Ezreal, and just absolutely demolish him, but... There is that potential. No sign of Azonias, no armor from the Ezreal, probably not even armor runes. Health per level is actually the likely choice in the mid lane against the Lissandra. Maladoric. Does. So a pretty good pick coming out there from Blue Team. They've got that Baron up as well, so they might be able to use that sort of that little bit of an advantage that they've got so far to, to push in towards this red inhibitor. So hmm. still backwards and forwards, can't call it just yet who's gonna be able to take this one away. It's a really different game. We've seen the prioritization of Baron. We finally see a Baron this game. Last game was certainly all about highlight real players through and through, finding the picks. Back throwing at the end. The dragon. The answer dragon does come together. We talked about that first dragon, but crucially, denying subsequent dragons was a big factor. And with Baron, no way for red team to contest. So team tally has to give up those all crucial six percent stats to the blue. Team. Well, going into that Raptor again. He's going to away. This is going to be a huge offer coming out from Jimmy. Does a lot of damage. Red team getting tons of kills here. That's three already. Stereo looks like he's keen to continue the chase. Minky Whale is going to have to run out of here. Of course, you can see Aral Doric really wasn't in that fight. Had to teleport into the bot lane. That is really no, it was actually in base. Tried to teleport, oh, okay. but with three dead already. It yeah, just been true. extra gold donated over. He's one of the few players doing very well on his team. Similar score. More fighting happens. Aral Doric's going in, but he gets a lot of it. Yeah, trying to play the janitorial duties here, but at the moment, the... Uh, Yes, the dirt and the gem is getting the better of the gem. They're trying to. Mickey comes in, gets the, the kill. Of course, there's another kill going over to Aladoric as well, but uh, Lucian in there to take a kill onto the Riven. So, I don't know if Mickey will close out this kill. Oh, oh boy! That's what I want to see. Man, that time the critical strike came through, and that was certainly some damage. Only two items and the straight of dirt from Mickey Well, I'm but, sold. Uh, well. <laughs>
I don't know about the 30 minutes of uh, ramp up time, but uh, it's against a, a mid lane Ezreal, so I guess you can't really complain about rank ramp up time. What did you say, worth it? Well, Mickey, oh, that was so close to hitting Tally there, but he didn't have ulti, so probably would have been okay um, in the end anyway. Ah, depends on the crits. You get two crits. Remember, you do the extra attack speed from the least in passive, so there is that surprise burst that uh, can always come through. Game still finally placed. Look at this. I mean, compared to last game where there was basically a 10,000 gold lead, maybe 18 minutes into the game, we're almost all tied up. 800 gold in the game, 31 minutes in. Low gold. Gold between the two teams in terms of gold farmed, but not a lot of gold in terms of difference. So, very much even footing. So, thank you all trying to make the build work again. We're not getting any crits just yet. Can spot out that Wukong, of course, because of his. So misses the Q that time though, so can't go in and probably a good back thing up. in the end. Because if he had gone in there, you can see obviously the trail oh, of the team. Well, that was uh, three spells. That was no auto attack. No choice needed. Mighty hits. That's going to be Riven dead as well. What can the red team get out of this? Because that's a pick crucially onto the Riven. Yeah, the inhibitor in the bot lane has respawned for the blue team. Obviously, Red here, not really in a position to be able to take that one. They can try and push this wave down. <laughs> there goes Minky Well, See you later, mate. Man, you don't even need the ultimate. Apparently, it only just comes online after picking up both the kills. Maybe the meta look. I don't know if you can get Ezreal through the laning phase, but what we learned this game is that if you can, Runic Echo, Lich Bane, Ezreal does quite the load of damage. I feel like no matter what build you get on Ezreal, you just become strong late game. I mean, look, look the blue build Unless Ezreal, you're building something stupid. Blue, blue build Ezreal is strong in the late game, but it's not deletion damage strong. It's about consistent damage. It's yeah. about kiting. It's about 40% CDR. Burst Ezreal, specifically Lich Bane and AP. Man, I'm a believer. I believe where I couldn't leave it. Okay. Like that. That, was, that was pretty good. Yeah? Pretty good. Injecting a bit of song into what has been a very close series between these two. Not sure about the chances here for the red team to be able to take this turret, but I guess they're just trying to buy time for a pace down there in that bot lane to try and get that into bit That's why you can see, just using the Frost Queen's lane, just trying to split push as you mentioned before. Wukong. Wukong doesn't have teleport, they get the turret anyway in top, yeah. so your skepticism is well found as, well, that's half your health gone, yeah. casually for the little Good opportunity there for Lulu to get the wild growth off, but uh, not to use it. He has to use it on himself. Just only gets the first kill onto the Renton, and that's actually a pretty reasonable defense there coming out from the blue team. A little bit too late though, because they already lost that inhibitor. Yeah, a little bit of an overstay uh, turret. by the red team. They lost the turret, they didn't lose the inhibitor yeah. though, and even with that time, no way to pick up the inhibitor in the bot lane for Wukong. So. This is just going to mean lots of minion waves pushing in. You see in the bottom lane, crucially, two tower advantage means these minion waves are going to keep pushing, but if they don't pressure the map, the sun is going to pick up plenty of free oh, gold. It's, what? That is how much damage that you do. That was one ulti. Didn't hit any minions, and it meant that the Ezreal literally almost one shot from full health across the map. Which is done. That's really not a good feeling when you're an AD carry, is no, it? No, not a good feel at all. I mean, we were talking about the, the orb, and maybe we can pretend that Ezreal's ultimate is an orb. Please tell me, shot. so you know we'll see a bit more about CSGO as well. Oh, not time for just yet. No, certainly not. Eldorik gonna jump in there. Good flash for the Tally. Gets a lot of damage across, but not quite able to get the final tag onto Tally. He manages to get out there. Here comes the ulti. Is it gonna be enough for anything? No, misses pretty much everyone. I think he took a little bit of damage off it, but uh, oh, wow, he's king. He's king because he has the Lulu ult, but see there in two minds between the two decisions does end up backing away things are tense here mm. it's been a close game throughout if they don't play around tally if we do see the ribbon get the deletion on the Ezreal looks like on balance deal with the Ezreal and it should be pretty comfortable fight wins for the blue team well you say that but Lucian's got six kills in the bank there reasonable amount of items as well so he can do a bit of damage so there's a reasonable amount of items and there's a 34 minute six item blue Ezreal. yeah that's true or AP Ezreal, I mean yes. obviously the the, uh, the damage is gonna fall greatly if the Ezreal goes down but there is still that present threat of uh, the Lucian to some degree I agree with you I think it's all about the Ezreal Whoa. that last hit wow Baron does the last bit Baron sends his regards all I can say about that one We'll kill there for Tally as we see Riven going down as well. This is going to pretty much signal a free Baron for the red team. And the back of that, you have to expect that all these bullets and bullets are going to go down. You have the minion waves for it, but you're right. It's time to brute force. You've got two man advantage. It's still 40 seconds to the first of 
Those members are up, so this should be objective time for the red team. Should be indeed. They've got full HP. They're looking pretty on the mana front as well, so they're keen to fight. Moving towards that mid lane, obviously. Going to have the backup of the creep well, there. And there goes Tally. Gets the damage across. The ultimate's going to come out from Lulu, but it's not going to be enough. Pace okay, coming in there. Kill. And uh, that's really just another death timer ticking down. I think it's going to be the last inhibitor. Oh my goodness. See Nothing else player. to say right there. Man. Damage rotations, if you ever get that Lich Bane auto attack, goodness gracious me, people die instantly. This is looking very close to being the end of the game here for the, for the team. Yep, they might be able to push and win. It's still only just Minky well up. Are they going to try and play with their foot or are they going to try and end it? That's the question. Minky's looking for an option. Remember, full AD Lee Sin definitely gets the kill. Yeah, if he hits something good here, he'll be able to find one. He does get that one onto Wukong, but that's not the important player here. Tallywacker is the one that they need to kill. Ruby taking a lot of damage, does manage to get out. No flash available, so it's going to be very difficult for her, for her to get onto Tally. Minky Well doing his best to get him down. Not quite going to be able to do that, and this is actually going to force the red team back. So, blue team hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Skin of their teeth, but no more than that. There's another ult. Slows down. Remember, this actually realized the last item here from the Ezreal. So, I don't mind that. Come in. It's, uh, it's very ult-centric. You've got to hit that skill shot. You don't do very much. It's the reality of Ezreal and all his bombs. To the nth degree here, Ribbon's looking for a kill. He said QSS up. It's not, so has to back Backs away, but starts heading back in the direction straight away. Oh, good little dodge there coming out on that Morgana blinding. But Ethan's actually going to be punished for it. Goes down. I'm not sure what they're going to be able to get out of this, especially considering Tally comes over from the blue buff. And uh, picks up a kill. Actually, it's the Lucian Slot and Stereo to pick that one up. So probably a good idea now for Tally to probably stop taking all the kills. Well, <laughs> you say that, but uh, I don't think he's done. Yeah, I don't think he cares. <laughs> Whoa, little red taking a ton of damage. Shaun of the Dead goes down. Oh, Dork, though. He's creeping around here. It's in a good position. Remember, Little Red trouble. took almost 100% of his health, and that wasn't actually the first target. That was with no. the 15% damage reduction. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Well, we were wondering about Tally's top lane champion pool, and maybe he's going to be making the call for the top lane, Ezreal, with Smite. Look, it's a risk. Smite teleporter might have to be, but uh, if we need some roll swaps, Tally's obviously got this pocket pick in his pocket. Yeah, I mean, the, this is always sort of the dream for the, the AP Ezreal can get shut down pretty hard in the early games, so if you get well, to a late game when like you this, casually have 18 like kills. Flame Horizon and then some 120 CS ahead yeah. of his opponent, obviously picking up farm across the map wherever he can. Free farmed AP Ezreal. You know, it's a dream state. It doesn't happen very often. It's one of those mirages. It's the, uh, it's the Loch Ness monster of builds, but when you finally catch a sight of it, it is a sight for the eyes. Yes, so one inhibitor down already for the blue team. Look at this wave in the bot lane for red. That's huge. It is massive, and Riven's out of position, but we'll back in. Probably not going to be punished for that. Red team wants to finish it off here. They're in a position where if they can keep Tally alive, they will win a fight. There's no argument about that. Lissandra's looking for an angle. Well, that was a little bit risky coming out from Tally. He mispositioned a little bit, but not punished for it. He's going to be able to get a lot of damage across to Lissandra in. The back of that, Mickey Well takes a few to the face as well. Kalamat is going to have to ulti here, but really it's not going to be enough to save him. He does flash out, so in the end I was wrong. He does survive. The ultimate comes across here. Shaun of the Dead takes a little bit, but not too much. That's Tally without an ultimate stereo under a lot of pressure coming out from Aladoric. But here comes the backup from Tally. The Guardian Angel has been popped, and Insane Logistics just going to be sitting in here waiting for that stun. Yes, he gets it. And there uh, for those guys. And obviously, it's opened up a little bit of an opportunity there in... Blue team. So so trying, kill, to, trying to go for the back door while there was a lot of fighting going in the front lines. Not done. These minions are pushing onto the base. It's a four versus four at the moment. You have to say it still favors the red team because Tally is alive. But Minkuel, we know what he can do with this build. If he hits it, if he hits a Q onto Tally, it's going to be pretty dangerous. Oh, a really good ulti coming oh. out there from the Wukong. He's going to do a lot of damage. Four knockups. Gets a kill onto Tristana. Here comes the second one there onto the Lissandra. And that is surely going to be the death knell for the blue team. Tally getting all those autos across onto the next. Minky doing his best, but he goes down. Fighting, but um, yeah, really nice little comeback from that red team. Team at Tally pulls out the win, but casually 37 out of 42 kill participation for a mid lane Ezreal with Smite. That's something that should never happen, no. but a quadra kill later, the snowball started, the snowball never ended for Tally.
Well, as no, he put his team on the back. The snowball hasn't ended all day for Tally because obviously he was playing Nunu earlier. Oh, so. look at you. You're, you're very savvy today. That was... Uh, I'm getting into the League of Legends spirit. You're getting into the... you got the language going. you got the references. Team Empire from 2011. Yeah. you got it all going, Elfish. I knew you could do it, so I'm proud of you. You're keeping it together. <laughs> But uh, we'll, we'll have to talk about the AWP later. I do, yeah, yeah. I do have some questions. You know all about the CSGO. But for now, we're going to go to a break. We're going to be back with more excellent League of Legends here at the Play It Cool house party for Team Legacy.